And we're back. Thank you for bearing with us. Uh, our IT went on the fritz there. No IT people in the bunker. So we figured it oh out. Oh boy, we're in trouble then. But while we were gone, Woo! things have been get hit, getting hit on the bid screen. Tony, what do you got? Zion Williamson, Panini, Cyber Monday, PSA, Gem Mint 10, one of one, 17,500. Wow. And he's in his Duke uniform. I mean, this guy is, is every, a lot of people are investing in him. And if he, he hasn't played can, much in the pros, but he's been impressive. So he has far. been impressive, yeah. Not a huge sample size, but it's good to see him playing. And it's, I mean, going to help the market a great deal when you have that big rookie that everybody wants and everybody it just loves. He's got that big smile. He's got a good personality. He's a guy that is going to help that franchise hopefully take it to the next level. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's talk about another young guy, shall we, Tony? What do you got up next? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Wow, mm -hmm. Mike. That's called a segue. That is. He's, he's, he has his A game tonight. <laughs> we have an 1890s Casey Stengel baby photograph with hair samples. Now, this actual photo was used in a book um, on Stengel. Uh, what was children's it? book. It was a children's book, and it's, I think it's page 26 or something. And they have that. You obviously read it. Nice. <laughs> Recently? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you want to know about Casey Stengel, come to me. But no, um, it's uh, of course when and when you usually hear of Stengel, you you think of him as an old man, as a coach or as a manager for the Yankees. I figured he was born looking like a sixty year old. Man. <laughs> That's the only way I can picture. Him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you rarely see anything, even from his playing days. You don't really see much from from his playing days. But this is his baby photo. Uh, this comes has, from the family. It it, it 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 comes directly from the family. So. Uh, very unique item. It's at 280 with a thousand dollar estimate. I think that's one of those that's going to kind of creep on up tomorrow night. Yeah, and uh, you know, I never thought I'd say this about Casey Stingle, but he's adorable in that. Yeah, he's cute. Yeah, <laughs> especially with that hair. Plus the and the hair comes with it. You exactly. Lot of exactly. Hair. That is a you can clone right Casey there. Stingle. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, you got a laboratory going? Ah, uh, you never know, Mike. You know what heritage? Never know. Not in our department, but in other departments, we've sold hair from presidents. Uh, yeah. We have sold some secretariat hair before in our department. So look out for that. We got another question. <laughs> Just to comment this time, Scott, Mark, and Ray say hi. Oh, Scott, wow. Mark, Ray, thank you guys for joining us. Are they all watching together? Or are they? Or is this three different? Stay separated, guys. Uh, Stay separated, to guys. To be determined. Okay. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. great to hear it. So uh, I'm going to talk about some Honus Wagner cards if you'll if you'll let me. I'll let moment. you talk about Wagner. All right. So uh, <laughs> first one we got is a 1910 E98 set of 30 Honus Wagner. This is from the Black Swamp find, Tony. You remember that? Uh, that's right when I started at, at Heritage, and I, I thought the cool thing was when we handed out promo cards, you know, we handed out PSA slabbed cards of those at the National. That's so right. That, it was uh, quite the media crush um, when that happened. And uh, So the Black Swamp find was a family that was cleaning out a family house in Defiance, Ohio, uh, the Black Swamp region, as they call it, and they found a grouping of these E98 cards completely untouched since they were printed. They were still in the box that the original owner got them, still had the twine tied around them. That's, the, that's really Hundreds cool. that's of amazing. them in pristine condition, and this is from that collection. We've been selling them over several years now. Um, the Flying Dutchman, uh, and he's second only to Cobb in this issue of 30 cards. And it's showing here the fielding form that made him the first shortstop into the Hall of Fame. And uh, as we said, this has been untouched since his playing days. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. a beautiful example, PSA Mint 9, pack fresh when it's a century old. Feels yeah. great to say that. That's Tony. just incredible. And I mean, just think how many people have thrown away, you know, Back boxes. Yeah, you know, people didn't think about saving that kind of stuff. And I know Pete had the story about how when that happened, how they called him on a Friday, 5 o'clock, and he was ready to go home, and he didn't. Didn't think, you know, I'm sure the, I'm sure these are real. It was the biggest and, card of, call of his life. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so currently this is the only one graded mint with a green background from the Black Swamp Fine. It's a beautiful example, uh, an estimate of 20000 on that one. But we have more rare Honus Wagner cards. This is the 1911 E94 Close Candy Honus Wagner, red, in a PSA X5 None higher. Very early caramel card here. 
the menacing batting pose from Wagner on this one, and the red variant. This one is just a stunner. Deep and enticing background in a blinding white frame. Modest wow, you should be a writer, writer, I think. That is beautiful. <laughs> I'm coming up with all this right up. The yeah, top of my head. I. <laughs> um, a short wrinkle in the upper left, but other than that, a beautiful example and a very scarce E card here. This is one of six at X with none higher. So we're looking for that one to do about 8,000 tonight. And then this one, talk about rare. This is the 1912 J. Konigsberg Candy Honus Wagner. It's an SGC authentic. There are only four graded examples of this card. Very unique card. Um, it's one of those that probably a lot of people haven't seen it. And um, it went unidentified. This set is very obscure. It went unidentified with, for decades with only a few known. Not much was known about the set. A near complete box confirmed that they were made for Jay Konigsberg candy and that they were the front and back panels of a box of candy and jewelry. One panel was a black and white scene. The opposite panel was in color with the top of the player's head encroaching into the top of the panel as this one does here. This is the color panel for Honus Wagner. And yes, the portrait is that portrait of Honus <laughs> Wagner. Wow. Very recognizable. Uh, this one's SGC authentic. It's hand cut. And this is one of only four all by SGC graded examples, no PSA examples. I'm hearing the word rare. That's kind of a it's, reoccurring yeah. theme here. Well, that's how you like your steak. That's how I like <laughs> my, collect my collectibles, Tony. Medium. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we're going to say rare a lot. We're talking about some of the highlights. We have some incredible items. There's over 3,000 lots in this auction, cards and collectibles. So if you're looking for something unique, we've got it. And this is one right here. I'd never seen this one before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So had to bring that out and talk about it. And, you know, of course, that famous portrait right there. And this is a different card, though uh, even rarer, perhaps, than the Wagner 206. There you Only go. four graded examples. All right, Tony. You're such a salesman. <laughs> you're so good. Well, I'm dressed like a used car salesman. <laughs> it's it's Better than me, though. I'll the waist up. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> up next, we've got a 1955 to 59 Hall of Fame. The images have been staggering. Lines of cars stretching for miles as people wait for hours to collect donated meals. We have seen them over and over in recent weeks. One warning sign among many that a global pandemic has severe implications for our neighbors trying to remain safe and healthy and hoping not to go hungry while doing so. This is why Heritage Auctions, the world's largest collectibles auction house, is proud to partner with the hometown professional sports teams and some of sports' biggest names Good and names. greatest players. And the autographs are very, very, uh, I would say, you know, they rate probably eight to nine in, in, in quality, which is, uh, you know, these are signed at Blue Ballpoint, which has stood the test of time. And, uh, it looks beautiful. Yeah, it does, it does. And I just, you know, having Cobb on there just takes it to, to a whole different level. And uh, that's got a $3,000 estimate right now. It's at 3400 so it has exceeded that number. And tomorrow is when everybody... It's got a beautiful Cobb signature. Yeah, so it does. Yeah. It right there. yeah, well, you can put that right out there. Put it in your, in your, in, into your collection. Absolutely. And then after that, we've got a 1928 uh, Babe Ruth single sign ball. Um, dated to October of that season. Of course, they ended up winning the World Series, Murder's Row. And a nice period signature from Ruth. Uh, he signed a lot, of course, his whole life. But most of the stuff you see is more 30s to 48, you know, to, towards the end. And to he was busy one. carousing. In the yeah, 20s. he was a busy Roy, man. Yeah. Roaring 20s. He was, he was doing quite a bit of <laughs> unmentionable stuff. But uh, <laughs> anyway, it's a beautiful, beautiful single sign ball. Um, signed during the World Series of 28, and uh, that one right now is just under $2,000, and uh, just a nice period signature of the essential autograph everybody does need. Oh, of course, the cornerstone. The cornerstone. Speaking Absolutely. of Babe Ruth, I've got this 1920s WUNC Universal toy. Ruth, Johnson, Sizzler, Kovaleski. How about that line? That's a pretty Wampire. good, uh, yeah. SGC Authentic. <laughs> Uh, what's significant about this one is it has the 1918 Ruth photo in the Red Sox uniform. Oh, wow. So yeah. when he was with the Yankees, he was the most photographed athlete in America, possibly the most photographed man in America. And uh, But images of him in the Red Sox are very rare. Um, 
1920s for cards was all about quick and fast promotion when it came to cards. Most one, or th one to three colors on cheap stock had to be hand cut by the consumers. And this is a rare four, cut, four card hand cut panel attributed to the Universal Toy Company, believed to be part of their packaging. Wow. So interesting there, it had to be hand cut. Um, you got Ruth, you got Walter Johnson, you got George Sid Sizzler, you got Stan Kovaleski. Very nice card, yeah. no major creases, and this one is going to sell tonight. A lot of Hall of Famers in that. Absolutely. <laughs> question? Dean has an update to his Jeter question. All right, Dean. Will Heritage be postponing their specific Jeter auction? We are not postponing any auctions. We're happy to say um, Heritage has been doing online auctions for over 20 years, longer than many auction houses have even existed. Mm -hmm. So we're very comfortable. We were able to continue. Uh, we had auctions closing right when the lockdown started. We have a fantastic IT team uh, that's able to keep the machine going. Shout out to them. I know they're all watching right now. Yeah, they um, do a wonderful job. They, they love to be huddled keep... over their computer. So why wouldn't they, why wouldn't they be watching this? But uh, we're keeping everything going as scheduled at HA.com. You can find our auction schedule. We have a lot of auctions coming up. We've got this one closing tonight. We're going to have a the Henry Newber collection is a single consigner auction that's coming up next. We have a July card auction. We got David Hall T206 collection part five coming up. And then at the end of the summer, we're going to have our platinum auction. Oh, we've got some history. Doric items coming up in that sale. That's I don't think we can tell one. yet, but um, there's there's some really unique items that have never seen the light of day. And they'll, they'll be making their hobby debut. You should see how excited Tony's been about Oh, uh, Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> um, like a kid in the candy store, Christmas morning, it, it's just unbelievable. But the, Dean's the talking about, we have weekly auctions that open every Sunday. They run for two weeks. Uh, it's items, you know, 500 to 1500, and we're going to have one that's dedicated just to Derek Jeter, and uh, we're going to keep that one put right where it is for now. Mm -hmm. So, just, just just an update. There's been some really good numbers on the on these Hall of Fame plaque postcards. Dave Bancroft, 3200 is a very good number. That's he, a tough one. Yeah, it's a tough one because he died, I think, two years after going into the Hall of Fame. So there's not a huge sample size of that. And also we have. Um, Oh, geez. Kid Nichols, 4,500. So wow. really, really good numbers on the Hall of Fame plaque postcards. We have some of the best ones in the industry, and uh, it, it's really showing right now with the uh, numbers. And Tony, we haven't talked about any sets yet. So right now we're going to do it, and we're going to start with a legendary set. This is a 1933 Gaudi. This is a near set, 238 out of 239. It's missing card 119. That's Hornsby. But a legendary set, often referred Beautiful to set. in the top three with the T206 and the 52 tops. Uh, the thing I love about this set, it's, it's just beautiful. They put, Gaudi put the time into it to create a great product. Mm -hmm. In 1932, the U.S. started the worst economic depression in our nation's history. This set was released in 1933, in the middle of the depression, and Gaudi quadrupled their profits that year based on this set. Wow. One, one cent pieces of gum at a time and a card, and this drove people, if they were gonna buy something for one cent, this is what they were gonna buy. It's a beautiful set. It's got legendary cards, four Ruth cards that are all iconic, and this is a fantastic set right here. If you wanna knock it all out in one purchase, not try <laughs> to go. scrounge around Just hit that bid and button. buy them all. Here it is right here. Uh, should do about 24,000, but some high quality examples in there, SGC graded. And we can't talk about the 33 Gaudi set without talking about the 33 Gaudi Nap Lajoie. <laughs> Don't sleep on Nap Lajoie, Tony. <laughs> this one is a PSA Near Mint 7, which is just wow. unbelievable. Uh, only the T206 Wagner is there a bigger divide between the haves and the have-nots. Mm -hmm. uh, this is an incredibly rare card. It was not offered initially with the rest. Yeah, um, it, it was kind of controversial. <laughs> a lot of people were not believe, happy with Gaudi. Many believe it was a marketing ploy. People were collecting, wanted to complete the sets. They couldn't <laughs> find card 106. Lajue, you only people who got it were people that were fastidious enough to send a letter requesting it to the Gaudi Gum Company. So every single one came through the mail. A lot of them were paper clipped to a letter. Right. 
Yeah. So finding finding it is hard. Finding a high grade example is next to impossible. Uh, and you've got one right here in a near mint seven, graded mainly but not exclusively on the centering. PSA and SGC have only graded just over 125 examples of this card. Um, so one of the most de desirable of the chewing car chewing gum era, and a near mint seven is just. What more can I say? Of Lazaway. No I mean, Lazaway. one of the game's biggest stars. One of the game's biggest early That's stars. That's why that marketing ploy worked. That yeah. was a card people wanted. Yes. Where's Lazaway? Exactly, exactly. And it, <laughs> it, it, it is kind of brilliant strategy, marketing strategy, because... It uh, worked, as, as, <laughs> as we noted. Yes. Um, so, yeah, incredible card. We're expecting 50,000. Let's see where it's at right now. 45,000. So it's creeping Some up there. Some very good numbers. Yeah. Some very good numbers. Yes. These card collectors don't quit, Tony. They don't. They don't. And they like to fight and have, you know, it, 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 it's a jockeying for position, a lot of this. And having on the uh, population report, having, you know, having our, you know, having the, the better set and having and Let's the, face it, a big part of collecting is bragging. Absolutely. And if you've got a larger way, you can brag. If you've got one in a near mint seven, you, 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 show you, you, me nice yours sense. that's better. Yep. Show me yep. yours that's yep. better. Staying with Lajaway, uh, a really unique item that, that came in, 1905 decal bat. And these, the biggest factor in the value is what's the percentage of the decal that remains. And this one is about 95, 98%, almost 100%, one of the nicest decal bats of Lajaway. Of course, a lot of kids would would use them to play sure. baseball or street ball, perhaps. Yeah, I mean they they got scuffed up, and unfortunately, most of the of the decals are not in very good shape. This is one of the nicest ones you're going to find. It's a six thousand dollar estimate. It's at twenty six hundred right now, and um, one of the finest Lazaways that I've ever seen. It's a beautiful one. It is. It is. And after that, we've got a nineteen twenty. Ty Cobb single sign ball. Cobb, most of the Cobb autographs you're gonna find, uh, they were well after his career. He was settled into retirement. This one's actually from when he was dominating the uh, diamond. Signed in 1920 and dated with family provenance and uh, very, very difficult finding a Cobb signed from his playing days. Uh, this one's got a 6,000 estimate right now. It's at 1800 so uh, just a beautiful signed Cobb. And it's not that he wouldn't sign autographs. It's just finding one from his playing days, incredibly difficult. Indeed. So, Tony, um, we're very excited. We have another auction that's live right now. It's yes. our DFW Superstars are in this together auction. And it, every dollar is going to benefit the North Texas Food Bank. North Texas Food Bank provides meals for some of the neediest people in our community. And like many institutions that are similar, it has been struggling and it has been overwhelmed with need due to the COVID crisis. We wanted to do something, so we reached out to the Dallas Cowboys, the Dallas Mavericks, the Dallas Stars, the Texas Rangers, and FC Dallas. And they all very generously donated some incredible signed items and some player experiences. And... All those items are up for auction. You can find that at ha.com right now. Every dollar, including the BP, is going to the North Texas Food Bank. PSA DNA graciously uh, donated the authentication. Full LOAs for every item. They did it uh, for free That's cool. to make sure Very that good. every dollar goes to the food bank. And um, it's a great cause and something you should bid in if you can. There's some incredible items in there. The auction's gonna close on Wednesday the 13th at 8 p.m. Central Time. We're gonna have a live auction in sports, Tony. Oh, I can't wait to see that. Uh, it's gonna be a great moment. We're looking forward to it and happy to support a great cause. And uh, take a look at some of the items we have in the, that auction. The images have been staggering. Lines of cars stretching for miles as people wait for hours to collect donated meals. We have seen them over and over in recent weeks, one warning sign among many that a global pandemic has severe implications for our neighbors trying to remain safe and healthy and hoping not to go hungry while doing so. This is why Heritage Auctions, the world's largest collectibles auction house, is proud to partner with the hometown professional sports teams and some of sports' biggest names and greatest players for the DFW Sports Superstars Are In This Together charity auction benefiting the North Texas Food Bank. 
The Dallas Cowboys, Dallas Mavericks, Texas Rangers, Dallas Stars, and FC Dallas have each generously donated items for this auction to fill the North Texas Food Bank's coffers during this difficult and desperate moment. Bidding opens April 29th at HA.com and runs through May 13th, culminating that night with a very special live auction at 8 p.m. Dallas time. That's when we'll all gather around the computer to raise money for the North Texas Food Bank when it needs our help the most. Among the one-of-a-kind items available during this special auction, you will find a painted diagram of the legendary 1975 Hail Mary play, created and signed by none other than its mastermind, Hall of Fame Dallas Cowboys quarterback Roger Staubach, on its 45th anniversary. His partner on that play, receiver Drew Pearson, has also signed the piece. There will never be another keepsake like this one. FC Dallas is also offering a player for a day experience, which includes signing a real first team contract, a video about that signing, and a full FC Dallas kit. The winner will also have the opportunity to train with the FC Dallas first team during an upcoming training session. That'll happen later, of course, but a team signed ball will be the winners today. And the Dallas Stars are offering four plaza level tickets and a post game meet and greet during the 2020 2021 season. There are also signed jerseys, balls, helmets, and photographs from local sports greats, including Troy Aikman, Dirk Nowitzki, Michael Irvin, Dak Prescott, Christoph Porzingis, Pudge Rodriguez, Ezekiel Elliott, Joe Pavelski, Jerry Jones, and Mark Cuban, to name just a few. Everyone was eager to help when they heard that the North Texas Food Bank distributed 6 million pounds of food just between March 15th and April 15th a 1.5 million pound increase over the previous two months combined. More than 13,000 families have been served at the mobile food pantries in just the past few weeks, with as many as 70% of those in need clients who have never before sought help. These athletes have done their part by participating in heritage auctions in this Together Charity Auction. Now it's your chance to do your part by going to ha.com backslash in this together between now and May 13th when the live bidding begins at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. We'll see you there. Happy bidding. All right, that didn't go as well as the first one did. So anyway, we are in downtown Green Bay. This is my good friend, George Calhoun. He was co-founder of the Green Bay Packers along with Curly Lambeau and a couple other guys. Uh, so anyway, what I want to talk about right now is a very cool piece. It's the 1998 Jerry Rice game used in unwashed San Francisco 49ers photo match jersey, photo match to two games. To my knowledge, this is the first time a uh, photo matched and unwashed uh, Jerry Rice jersey has ever come to auction. There might have been one other unwashed Jerry Rice jersey that came to auction, but this would be the, the only other one to date. It was worn in two games, and in one of the games, the game against the New England Patriots, Jerry had 115 yards and a touchdown. And the other game, it looks like he caught five catches. So pretty significant jersey, and it's one of two Rices that we have in this auction. We also have an Oakland Raiders unwashed jersey. Thank you. How about that? Your buddy Chris Narrett showing up? Oh, stellar came, work, Chris. Came through with some stellar content work. for us. Appreciate that. Um, so, Tony, what do we got on the bid sheet going right now? Oh, right now, of course, a lot of the cards are hitting. Um, 1956 tops. Hank Aaron Grayback's got hit twice at 2,000 right now. Um, 1941 Jimmy Fox Playball, 7,500. Uh, a lot of bids coming in now. This is when it gets hot and heavy and people really... Uh, ready to go. They're ready to I go. I you're ready to yep. go, Tony. That 33 Gaudi set just got hit. 26000 on that one. So, How about that? Uh, boy, don't get a big head. <laughs> don't get a big head, just Mike. Bi just big hair over here. <laughs> All right, I've got a few really unique cards I found. Um, rarely seen and rare, of course. So I want to talk about those. The first is the 1916 E137 Zenit Jimmy Claxton. And this one is significant because the baseball's color barrier was briefly broken in Oakland in 1916. 
Claxton was Canadian born of European, African, and Native American descent. His Native American heritage got him around the so-called gentleman's agreement. He played for the Oakland Oaks of the PCL, played just a couple innings, but he did play ball. And history was made there. His tenure lasted one week or a month, depending on your source. Uh, the Oaks released him when they learned of his accurate ancestry. And it would be three decades till Jackie Robinson officially broke the color barrier. Amazingly, Collins McCarthy Company had a photographer taking pics of the 1916 Oaks team during that brief tenure when Claxton was there wow. for their Zenut promotion. And this is the only card that features Claxton and the first U.S. card to feature an African American. That's incredible. So PSA and SGC have graded just nine. This one is an SGC fair, 1.5, but given the rarity, it's just an incredible card. And the history of it, too. Absolutely. Just... We've seen just a couple of them, but a, a really historic card and one that's n <laughs> not really well known. And mm -hmm. his exploits aren't well known, but they should be. Yeah. So that's what we're doing right here, yeah. Tony. Setting we're giving a history straight. lesson. So another Beautiful. great unknown player. This is the 1923-24 to 24 Nacionales. Jose Mendez, number 50. Far too many players know about this Hall of Famer. He could have shattered the color barrier. He had that kind of talent. A dominating pitcher in the Cuban Leagues and later the Negro Leagues. John McGraw saw him play, and he said, if Mendez was a white man, I would pay $50,000 for oh, his release wow. right there, which translates to $1.3 million in today's money. He said he's sort of a Walter Johnson and Grover Alexander rolled into one. So that can say it all That's right incredible. there. John McGraw <laughs> knew talent, and he knew how talented he was. His nickname, El Diamante Negro, the Black Diamond. <laughs> Great nickname. <laughs> He died very young, sadly, at 41. Um, in 1939, the Cuban Baseball League opened their Hall of Fame. He was in the inaugural class. Sadly, he had to wait till 2006 to get into Cooperstown, but he is a Hall of Famer. He had arm issues later in his career, switched to shortstop, dominating shortstop wow. when he switched over. A true talent. And this card is a rare, real photo. There's only 10 issues that include him. And uh, SGC has graded just 10 examples of this card. One of two at good with only one higher. It is a nice sharp portrait and this is a key card of the Cuban baseball card library. An exceptional rarity, it's worth about $30,000. That is an unknown right there. And then we're gonna go right to 1949 Bowman, Jackie Robinson, the man who did break the color barrier. True American hero, changed not just baseball, but our country. 1949, arguably his best season. Who's arguing? He won the MVP Yeah. 49. Under the tutelage of George Sizzler, his batting average jumped 46 points to an NL best, 342. He won the MVP. I love this card. He's got a great, huge smile, that bold background. There are nine at mid, mid nine like this, with none higher. It's got perfect centering. Sharp corners, no wax and gum stains, which everyone knows is like common, this issue. Common flaw, yes. Uh, just a beautiful card from a true legend. And if we're going to talk about that one, then of course we've got to talk about the 1950 Bowman Jackie Robinson card, number 22. This one also a PSA Mint 9 with none higher. This is a great action portrait right here. You know, a few years ago we sold the original photo that they used to make this card. And this is another hobby favorite. This one's got deep, beautiful hues, clean surfaces, and precise registration on that finely detailed illustration. And this is one of those cards, especially in a high grade like this, that when somebody gets it, it stays in their collection exactly. for a long time. You never see, it You're not going to see another one of these in a month. This is the first we've offered in Mint, and we see everything. So a true rare card and a beautiful one, one of my favorites. Which just got bid on actually, so 16500 on that one. 16000 right there, about to get to our 20000 estimate, but it wouldn't surprise me at all to see it go mm -hmm. higher than mm -hmm. that. Especially when you're talking high, high grade, there's just not a lot of that out there. Absolutely. Tony, I'm, right. I'm hogging in here. Please no, uh, you're going. fine. You're doing a heck of a job. <laughs> keep going, keep going. We've got uh, one of the nicest Josh Gibson signed baseballs um, in the hobby Incredible. right now. Um, Signed by Ray Brown and Gibson, but uh, most of the Gibsons you see 
or re the autographs are reduced from exposure. Um, he didn't sign a lot of baseballs. Yeah. He didn't sign a lot of anything. But uh, probably the nicest Gibson I've seen right now is at 39000 with a day to go. Um, it has a $50,000 estimate, so it's well on its way to surpassing that number. And uh, for Dodger fans, um, an essential piece, a 1955 team signed baseball. You know, when you talk Dodger autograph baseballs, it's 47 and 55, with 55 yep. being their only World Series win. This the one actually, did it. what's that? The Bums, the bums did, did it, yeah. After so many heartbreaking fall classics, they finally did win a World Series. This one belonged to Carl Erskine and has a letter of authenticity from him. Um, That's the, a cool note. Right that there. is, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Anytime you have player provenance, it helps it. And of course, Jackie Robinson, um, the autograph is really strong. Eight and a half, nine, um, and uh, just uh, a beautiful ball from the team that finally came through for uh, Brooklyn. Absolutely. All right, back to me. And I'm going <laughs> to talk about the calling card like... of the hobby right here. Oh, do we have some questions? We do. Let's get to those. We don't want to keep you all waiting. Michael wants to know, when will we have an appraisal day? Oh, an appraisal day. Michael, you know, that's one thing we love to do at Heritage. We get an expert from all of our departments. Together, they're all there. They talk about any item you have. We'll let you know what you're sitting on. Anything you find, something you're wondering if it's valuable, if it's not, if you should sell it, they'll help you out with that. Uh, we are going to get back to that as soon as the restrictions ease. Right now, it's kind of a question mark. Mm -hmm. um, our live auctions, we're not allowed to have people in the room. And um, it's the same for those. But we will get back to that. I promise you, Michael, uh, we're going to have those again. Now, on to the calling card of the hobby. 1952 <laughs> Tops, Mickey Mantle, number 311. The huge card needs no introduction. This one, near mint to mint eight. Wow. What a beautiful example. We've been lucky at Heritage. We've seen a lot of high-grade mantles, and this is one of the finest we've seen. It's one of 35 at near mint to mint. There's only 14 higher out of 1,700 submissions wow. to PSA. Conditions remarkably fine, strong centering, flawless registration, and that pack fresh gloss. <laughs> uh, it's an icon. It's a card every collection needs. Not everyone can buy it at this level. It's sitting at 290000 right now. Uh, the big boys who bid on those are going to have a little more action for it in a little bit. It should do around 400000 But if you're looking for a 52 tops mantle, we have a lot of them in this auction in all different grades, so plenty of people can get a taste of uh, the main card in the hobby right now, the one everyone wants. It, it just amazes me how even the low-grade ones, $8,000 for a PSA 1, and then all the way up to the number for a PSA 8. Um, it's just a beautiful card. It's timeless. It's a piece of, it's almost like a piece of artwork. Absolutely. It's, it, it is, is really what it is. No yeah. one would dispute that. Least of all me, Tony. Especially <laughs> when you're saying it. So speaking of other mantles, we have another 52 Tops mantle. This one's an SGC X Near Mint Plus 6.5. Really nice example. Uh, it's got rich, saturated colors. Layer of gloss, yet to use its <laughs> shine, just like you, Tony. Oh, and surfaces beautiful. totally free of the wax and gum staining. Interesting one about this one. Mantle once owned this example. So that's oh, he, oh, that right was there. part of his. Oh, that's really cool. It was in his collection. So thinking about that icon, he's sitting there looking over his shoulder, and the icon himself holding this one in his hand, looking at it. Mm -hmm. Great addition to uh, this card right here. Staying with Mickey Mantle, yeah. we have a circa 1980 Mantle and Maris um, dual sign baseball. Of course, I mean, Mantle signed a lot. Maris didn't sign anywhere near as much. Died in 85. Um, much bigger challenge than the m and boys to any true Yankee collection. This is um, one that's a must-have. Uh, of course, Mantle takes sweet spot residence. And Roger got the uh, side panel. but He's very uh, accommodating. He was very accommodating. Just like you, Tony. <laughs> but, Although uh, I'd say you're the Mantle, I'm the Maris. You're the long No, you're the mantle. Star. No, I'm no, the, no, no. I'm no, the flash no. in the pan. That no, you're not. <laughs> Two time MVP? Come on. What are you, what are you talking about? Uh, but uh, MVP just. MVP every day? Yeah. <laughs> uh, just a beautiful, beautiful. Uh, and there's not a lot of Eminem boys uh, 
dual sign baseballs out there, and this one uh, has a three thousand dollar reserve, and uh, tomorrow night it will close. Just a reminder: all the memorabilia is tomorrow night, and then Saturday night we'll have more cards and memorabilia in our final session. But this is the only night you're getting me and Tony, so we're talking about it all right now. <laughs> well, can we do FaceTime or something tomorrow? Sure. <laughs> sure. Uh, up next, uh, forty-six, forty-seven, Ruth, single sign ball, graded a PSA X Mint plus six point five. Beautiful, sweet spot signature. Um, Ruth, of course, signed a lot towards the end of his life just because he was so popular and he helped, you know, he did a lot of exhibitions and uh, did, you know, helped keep the game going, even though he was no longer involved in it. True um, ambassador. He was, he was. He came around a, around at the right time. The sport needed a, needed something good, and it was him, and uh, he changed it forever. Um, that's got a $10,000 bid right now with a 12,000 estimate, so that one is well on its way to uh, reaching that, that number. Room um, to go tomorrow. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And uh, we have a 1970s, the next we have a 1970s Thurman Munson single sign baseball. Very hard to find a high quality Munson autograph. That's a nice and, one. Yeah, and we've seen the prices for him go up considerably. He was used to be a four or $500 um, cut, now he's about 800 to 1,000 just for a cut. And this is a beautiful sweet spot signature. Currently at 3,200, um, the baseball was just absolutely stunning. And he, you know, took his time and wrote his name. Just beautiful, right across the, the sweet spot. Um, a nice, high quality Munson. That one's PSA seven. Uh, yeah, PSA seven overall nice. grade, which yeah. is a really, really tough, tough grade. All right, back to cards, Tony. And this is a cool one I found in there. This is the 1936 Worldwide Gum Joe DiMaggio, number 51. It's in an SGC 84 Near Mint 7. Um, Ted Williams once said, Joe DiMaggio was the greatest all-around player I ever saw. So that is... Uh, That's high praise. High praise coming from <laughs> Ted Williams, who many would say he was the greatest player. He's in that conversation. Um, so this is the Joe DiMaggio rookie card. On the back, it lists his nickname as Deadpan Joe. Which, if you look at it, <laughs> I never heard that that's before. exactly how he looks. Uh, very <laughs> stoic look on his face. He would have a lot to smile about in the coming years. 1936, he'd win the World Series as a rookie. And he'd taste that success ten more times in his career. So he'd have plenty to smile about. Plus, Marilyn Monroe. Yeah, I was thinking that. Smile that, about that. I was waiting for you to say it. Because if you wouldn't have said it, I would have worked it in there somehow. But DiMaggio isn't on many cards in 36. Mm -hmm. This one is the most important. Uh, printing is a bold strike. The text is translated to French to confirm its Canadian origins to our neighbors to the north. Absolutely. And uh, horizontal centering is teasingly close to precise <laughs> on this one. And this is another one that uh, when they come out, they get bought and they go into private collections and don't come back out. This one is a pop three with only one higher. Uh, and we're looking at about 60000 for that old deadpan one. Joe. <laughs> <laughs> that's all you'll call him. For I am now. learning so much tonight, Mike. Uh, we gotta just I'm, keep this going. That's it's, why I'm here, Tony. Thank you. Help uh, you learn. Uh, this <laughs> next one, 1965 tops Mickey Mantle, number 350. This is a PSA Mint 9. Beautiful example. Mantle and Tops went from largely unknown to dominate their industries essentially at the same time. 52. True. That's a good point. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. And by 65, they were both undisputed icons in their own venues and closely tied together. This is another nice example. It's a PSA Mint 9. There's none higher. Slight elevation in the vertical centering if you want to pick nits on this one, but uh, it's the top 1.1% 1 .1 of 4,800 4, graded. So there's none higher. Outstanding example here. And uh, everybody loves mantle cards. Yeah, and we got yeah. a lot of them. So yeah. find yours. Tonight. They continue to go up. There's no end in sight for mantle. Yeah, yeah. or the hobby, or you, or the Tony. Oh, we got another Speaking question. Of Tony. Uh oh. <laughs> Jay wants to know. Tony, you'll surely want to talk about my 1959 Fleer Indians lot on consignment, right? Let's Absolutely. Talk, let's talk about it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Give me one second, Jay. Let me look course, it up Jay, real we got quick. You, we got you in the books. We will, we will definitely reference it, I promise. <laughs> Jay also wants to know what a Mike and Tony dual sign ball would bring. Tell you what. You'd rather have Mike than me. 
I, Tony, I bring the value down. The sweet spot. No, I would not. No. But Jay, tell you what, we're going to send you one of those out. <laughs> we're going to sign it right after this. We'll date it to the auction. Uh, so Jay's a good fan. Thank you for joining us. He's in for every show we do. Um, I actually told Jay today he's my favorite bidder. He's my favorite consigner. Wow. And I don't say that about anybody. That's a title. That That's is. That's an inscription you can put on that bowl. <laughs> but don't worry. We got that coming out to you, Jay. Tony, what are you going to talk about? Okay, so Giannis Atadakumpo. Nailed it. Uh, oh, it took, I've had a lot of time to uh, practice that one. Um, you know, MVP, possibly MVP again this year. Uh, we have uh, Panini Prism Black Label, which is, of course, the top grade for Beckett. Creme de la creme, right? Yeah, yeah. It just Every, looks that's, cool, Everybody too. wants the, the black label. And if you hear, I'll, I'll hear guys in our office uh, thinking of black label, you hear that. <laughs> uh, right now it's at 5,500. And if he wins the MVP and maybe a championship this season? Uh, I know he's knows? got your vote for that. Hey, he's got my vote. Lifelong vote for him. But uh, 8,000 estimate at 5,500 right now. And we have another Giannis card, a Panini Flawless with um, Gem Mint 9.5 with a, a 10 autograph at 82.50 right now. As you can tell, the current cards, the current market is as strong as it's ever been. And you know, the prices are just, are just off the charts on this stuff. Unbelievable. Modern cards, especially in basketball, are doing yes. really yes. well right yes. now. Um, and you know, people like to collect who they watch. And there is a ton of great stars in the NBA right yes. now. And um, the card companies are doing a good job of controlling the output, making those special cards, the, re the refractors on the modern side, and uh, that manufactured rarity has worked. Yeah, and it has. The hobby is reflecting it. There's money behind it. But I'm going to take it back to the vintage, vintage <laughs> for a little bit. Taking it back to the old school. <laughs> uh, this is a 1961 Fleer Wilt Chamberlain number 8. PSA Mint 9. So saying Wilt Chamberlain and Mint 9... That just makes collectors stop in their tracks right there. Uh, 1,250 submissions to PSA. This is one of thir only 31 at Mint. There's only three higher. Wow. So beautiful card. This is a must-have for basketball collectors. Chamberlain's in that greatest of all time conversation. Should be talked about more. He could have survived, my opinion, in any time period. Right. Uh, I mean, the guy was just uh, just a freakish athlete. Uh, he was, I think he he was a high jumper in, at Kansas and uh, could run up and down the court like crazy. And Great uh, volleyball player. Yeah, great volleyball player. Whatever he did, he excelled at. And, well... <laughs> He did. <laughs> sorry, I didn't even. Think everything. Of, I didn't everything. even think of that. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, he's one guy that could have played in any time period, and he would have dominated. Of course. So this one's pack fresh, real attention grabber. Four sharp corners, nice layer of gloss, centering a small percentage off, but no printing imperfections. Beautiful example of Wilt's rookie. And speaking of rookie cards, another one that needs no introduction. This is the 1986 Fleer Michael Jordan rookie card in a PSA Gem Mint 10. Everybody's excited about The Last Dance. It is the only sports story going on right now, and it's been fantastic. We've talked about it on our shows over the last few weeks. The Jordan market is rising thanks to that. We're quite certain. And Just the prices, and we're going to be going over some of the prices. I mean, we're getting record numbers on Jordan stuff right now. That I, I just I, nobody saw it coming. It left Tony speechless. It that did. It did. Almost impossible. Seeing some of the prices on this Jordan stuff, which you're going to go over, uh, it shocks me. So this one, enough said about it, but it's at fifty-seven thousand five hundred right now. That's already a record for a PSA ten, and I wouldn't be surprised to see it go higher. We've got plenty of Jordan material in this auction on the memorabilia side and the card side as well. Uh, we've got the eighty-four, eighty-five star card is. And those are starting to go. Cards? Yeah, those are starting to kind of. Yeah, come up those a bit. are creeping up. Uh, all kinds of Jordan cards. So if you're looking for Jordan stuff and you say, "Wow, the PSA 10's already at a record," there's plenty to move down to, including this one, 0607 EX Michael Jordan Essential Credentials, the future. This is a BGS pristine 10. So think about this. There's more 86 Fleer Jordan rookies graded at 10. There's 312 than the entire population of this card. <laughs> yeah. So there was only 77 made. This is number 44 out of 77. 
and it's a prist BGS pristine 10. It's a beautiful card. Subgrade, centering's 10, edges 10, corners 10, surface 9.5, just 0.5 away from that black label we were so talking close, about. So close, so close. So a very cool one, a rare Jordan on the modern side of the cards. Uh, so one that you should look for if you're looking for another Jordan card. What's well, funny, that, that Gem Mint 10, I remember when that was a thirty thirty-five thousand dollars card. Now, it's literally doubled in the last couple years. It's, uh, you know, that series has brought so much attention because a new generation now has seen Michael Jordan. Yeah, being exposed to him. And speaking of another athlete who uh, is rising in the markets, Kobe Bryant. Mm -hmm. Tragically uh, lost him earlier this year, but I think people are really starting to appreciate what kind of player he was. We were talking about it last night on the Beckett Live show. Shout out to the Beckett mm -hmm. people. Thanks for having us on. That, you know, Kobe was an assassin out there. He was a lot like Jordan. Though. He was. He came down 100%. to it. He was killing people's teams, and I think a lot of people, they respected him, but, you know, you hated to see your team play him. Mm -hmm. He'd always hit that clutch shot. So, uh, but now that he's gone, everybody's missing him and really appreciating what an incredible player he was, what an incredible person he was. I know, like, He's also an Oscar winner. Yeah, exactly. I, I know growing up, I mean, when he came to Milwaukee, that was the one game that was always a sellout. You know, when Jordan came, LeBron, and Kobe... That was the one sellout they'd have, yeah. Because when he had that superstar power, and uh, yeah, there's, I mean, he he had that Jordan persona. He really did, and uh, I mean, five NBA titles and uh, yeah. two different runs, two different um, championship runs. He had just like Jordan did. Staying power. He did. Yep. Um, yep. So yeah, so this is an 0405 exquisite Kobe Bryant patches autograph BGS near mint mint plus 8.5 with an autograph 10. Only a hundred of these were made. So another limited release, and this is a beautiful example. Uh, we're looking for about 6000 for this. And I've got a couple Kobe Bryant items here. Um, oh, these are so cool. So, yeah, really, really neat pieces. Um, we've got a 2009 signed, um, signed basketball with an inscription that says 2009 Finals MVP. And, you know, if, if you saw Kobe on the street, you could, you know, I'm sure he'd sign an autograph. He was very nice to, he was very nice to his uh, fans. But inscriptions, especially on some of these guys that, you know, Jordan doesn't, very rarely does inscriptions, only through yeah. Upper Deck. Same as with this Kobe Bryant. Very rarely do you find inscriptions. Yeah, he, he would personalize it to your name. But to have this kind of inscription, uh, the market is incredible right now. Um, it's got a thousand dollar estimates at twenty five hundred. I could see this thing going for four or five thousand just because it's. In, a lot of times he would sign standard just Kobe. Now on this one you have his full name, Kobe Bryant. So very uh, cool, very very neat item. And after that we have a two thousand a pair of two thousand sixteen game worn Kobe game worn and signed uh, sneakers that were photo matched to a game against uh, Oklahoma City. So uh, those are at eleven thousand five hundred right now. And, uh, you know, they had a 10,000 estimate. So a lot of the high-end memorabilia is performing incredibly well in our auctions. And, and that style is uh, really popular with the sneakerheads. It is. For the it design. Is. Yep. So to have a pair that the Mamba wore himself, mm -hmm. very cool. And it's got a beautiful signature on that swoosh. I'm not a big fan of autographs on game used items, but um, in this case, it looks really, really nice. Yeah. In, the, in, that, in that paint pen. And I've got another Kobe card here. This is the 1996 Finest Refractor Kobe Bryant BGS Gym Mint 9.5. Look at him there. Fresh out of high school, ready to take <laughs> on the world. Uh, another great Kobe card, and his stuff's doing very well. This one's a 3300 right now. Definitely going to be some more action and extended bidding, which we're 50 minutes away from. Oh. Get the countdown going. This one, uh, the subgrade centering 9, edges 10, corners 9.5, surfaces 9.5. Another outstanding Kobe item there. And, you know, if we're going to talk Kobe, let's talk LeBron. If we're talking about <laughs> legends that of the modern era, this is the 0304 Ultimate Collection LeBron James BGS Gym Mint 9.5 with a 10 autograph. We've seen some huge prices for There's LeBron been a renaissance cards. In, in, Absolutely. In, in, in his stuff this Whoever year. Whoever you think the greatest is, people always talk, is it Jordan, is it LeBron, whatever camp you're in, this is a valuable card right here. Just 250 examples made. Got that bold blue ink signature. This is number 225 out of 250. And this one should probably clear 50,000. Wow. Yeah. 
Just one, just a, an update on one item that just kind of shocks me here. 1976 Topps football rack box had a 12,000 estimate at 21,000 right now. So just the unopened market has continued to perform and is just surging ahead. Uh, well, we're uh, going to talk really about some of that unopened wax here in a minute. Okay, uh, sir, I didn't mean to step on no, your toes, no, Mike. No, I just a, saw that. I just saw that one come across the screen, and I was like, "Wow, that's a, a uh, great number on that." Really hot item, and this one I'm going to talk about right now has caught my eye for a couple weeks. And then uh, in Last Dance, they had the Kobe and LeBron episode. Some of it was a little hard to watch, but it is so so cool to see them talk about each other and uh, their meetings and their whole relationship, mm -hmm. which, uh, you know, both were very private people, so not much of that was out there, and there's a lot of new information. This is a Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant signed oversized photo of them together. It's from that 98 NBA All-Star game. Uh, another limited edition, only 200 out there. This is number 45. It's got the UDA hologram, and uh, the price on this one has just been skyrocketing. No, no surprise. And, um, you know, we'd estimated at 2,500. That's 7,000. That's it? what things have been doing, and it's at 7,000 7, right now. But yeah. that is a really unique item, and if you're a fan of those two guys, it was cool to see them talk about their relationship, and then you get an item right here with both their autographs. So. And Jordan talking at his funeral was, I mean, is, powerful. is very, very powerful, yeah. I mean, it was just something else. And, you know, Lovely, Jordan's not uh, doing as much upper deck as he used to, and Kobe did upper deck for just a short time. So it's, it's such a limited piece, and uh, especially on that oversized photo. Uh, really, really good selling point. We've got some that. great basketball stuff in this auction. We do, that's for we sure. do. Um, is it my turn? It is. All right. The Michael Jordan Wings poster is a poster I'm sure a lot of us had as kids. Not we didn't yet. have them signed, though. I didn't have I didn't have one. Signed. No, I didn't either. Yeah, I never got a chance to 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 be like Mike. Uh, <laughs> this one had a fifteen hundred dollar estimate, and this just shows you the power of what Jordan um, autographs are going for. Twenty seven hundred right now. Ooh. I think the thing on this is how big the signature is. Thirteen inches. Yeah, it's a huge signature, and if, you know if you if you catch Jordan at a golf outing, if you were signing, you get a you know you'll get a regular autograph. This uh, much much bigger. You're not going to cart that giant poster around. <laughs> no, not quite. It. Not you're gonna quite. You're going to damage it. This one's in great condition. Uh, beautiful piece. And, yeah, everybody had that poster. Yeah, yeah. Uh, after that, we've got Jordan's first professional uh, NBA game, preseason ticket. Um, this one was October 5th, 1984. And the lower bowl for $8, you could see MJ uh, at the earliest stages of his professional career. $9,250, the Jordan ticket market. And we've said it all night. I know Jordan stuff's hot. The ticket market. Uh, we've had some record-breaking prices on Jordan tickets. We have some more tickets coming up in Platinum Night as well. So just a, a, an incredible, incredible Jordan uh, ticket from his first game. Unique. Very unique. Yep. Who's keeping that ticket, right? Who would have thought? Back in the day. Yeah, a preseason game, a pre too. Preseason game. All right, we're going to take a quick break. One of the big items we have tomorrow is a Babe Ruth home run bat. Awesome. With some great provenance from Ruth himself, take a look. I wish him all the luck in the world, Yankees teammate Frank Home Run Baker told the press midway through the 1921 season. He has everybody else, including myself, hopelessly outclassed. It had taken the Bambino just 25 games to match Baker's best during that spectacular 1921 season. One of those early clouts off inaugural Hall of Fame classmate Walter Johnson cleared the high center field wall of Griffith Stadium, landing 525 feet from home plate. Two months later, Ruth escaped Navin Field with a shot estimated between 575 and 600 feet the longest verified home run in Major League history. And while he held the attention of the sports world in his palms, this is the bat Ruth gripped in his hands as he belted his 52nd home run of that legendary 1921 campaign that would see him break his own record of 54 homers with a final tally of 59. This bat would see its moment in history during the final month of the Yankees' first American League championship season during a visit of the Babe's former Boston Red Sox club in the Polo Grounds. In the second contest of a September 7th doubleheader, Ruth used this bat 
to open the scoring of a 7-2 victory with a fourth inning, two-run shot of former teammate Herb Pennock and his 52nd home run of the season. As many collectors are aware, some of Ruth's most significant surviving game-used bats entered the collectibles realm as presentation pieces to accomplished young ballplayers. This particular model was likewise made a trophy for a teenage slugger, a youngster named Harry Borgman, who had been voted the best amateur player in his city in a poll conducted by the Cincinnati Inquirer. As the babe passed through that city during a postseason vaudeville tour, he personally presented this bat to the star-struck young man. A lengthy notarized letter of provenance from Borgman's son recounts the tale. But the validation of the claim is further strengthened by a pair of period documents. First, we have a newspaper clipping from the January 10th, 1922 edition of the Cincinnati Inquirer referencing Borgman's prize in the competition. Also present is a letter ghost signed by Ruth stating, here is the bat that hit the ball that brought me my 52nd home run. It served me well in baseball and I hope it will serve you as well. Nearly a century later, this remarkable slab of lumber stands as one of the most significant Babe Ruth bats in private hands. So, we're still on the east side of Green Bay, and this is where the Packers used to play before they moved on the west side at Lambeau Field. This is Old City Stadium. They started here in 1925, played in 1956, and Green Bay East High School still is here, and Green Bay East High School football team plays here to this day. Um, we are going to talk about a really, really interesting item. It's a 2000 Troy Aikman game-worn jersey. What makes this one extra special is it has the Tom Landry hat patch, the same year that he passed away. Uh, so they commemorated, honored him uh, in 2000. And that, that patch is super, super rare. You rarely see it on a game-worn Cowboys jersey. I believe they only used the white jerseys with that patch for, I think, two games. We couldn't photo match it, but uh, I guarantee you'll love the wear on it. It's legit hit marks on it. Just sometimes those white jerseys, it's just hard to photo match them. The lighting wasn't that good, whatnot. But a great piece. We, uh, I think last year we sold the Emmett Smith with the, uh, with the Landry patch in 2000, and it went crazy. I expect this one to go crazy as well. It's estimated at 4,000 plus. We'll see what happens. Wow, really enjoying Chris Nair talk about a Troy Aikman item. <laughs> but, uh, That's got to hurt. That's got to hurt. <laughs> I, I mean, know. it's got the Landry patch on it. Yeah. That is such a cool jersey. Yep, yep, yep. Um, Tony, what do we got on the big board? So on the big board, Joe Jackson caramel card at 24,000. The Aaron jersey, uh, Hank Aaron game worn jersey, 10,000. Some big time bids coming in. The 70 Tops Baseball Complete Master Set. Every card is mint or gem mint. 42,000. That's and, a cool uh, set. That is, that is. And the Mantle 51 Bowman signed at 31,000. So a lot of uh, big bids coming in. Of course, got 40 minutes before extended. There we go. So for all the overtime cards in begins. session one, you got to have your bids in before 10 p.m. Central Time, 40 minutes from now, if you want to take part in extended bidding. And I've got two items real quick that I want to talk about that are super unique on the card sure. side. This is the 1950 Minko JCM 125 U.S. Major League Ted Williams. It's a PSA good too, but this is one of those cards, the grade does not matter. So we all love the Tour of Japan. 1934 was the fam most famous one, but in 1908 is when the first one was. So Major League Baseball was working hard to expand the game. And it's not just America that's missing baseball right now. Japan is too. And, you know, in the mid-century, it was really exploding in Japan. 1936, they had their first professional game in Japan. And when you started to see them use American players for their promotion, that's when you knew baseball was huge. And that's what this Menko set is. And it is super, super rare. I've never uh, seen one before. I had never seen, it before, never seen it before either. We've got two in the auction. I'm going to talk about them real quick. Of course, 
The key card is this Ted Williams right here, the finer of only two graded right there. That's so it? This is, that's like, it. Wow. So that's something where it's missing from literally everyone's collection. Somebody's mm. going to add it to theirs tonight, one lucky bidder. Um, but it's got Japanese text on the back. And the portraits on these weren't always that accurate and looked a little cartoonish, but they nailed it with the Splendid Splinter. Looks they better great. have. Yeah, he would let them know. <laughs> Do you think he would He's have He's even uh, got a little that? grin on his face, which you don't see too mm -hmm. often mm -hmm. out of him, but a really unique card. It's at 7500 right now. Definitely expect that it will go a little bit higher in extended bidding. That's one some people have been sitting on may not have seen before, been waiting for one to come available, and it's one that once it goes in somebody's collection, it. forget it. It's That's not it. coming yeah. back yeah. out. So we have another one from the 1950 Minko set. This is Bob Feller, another Hall of Famer right there. This is the only PSA graded example right here. So if you want Bob Feller in this set, this is it. And look at that smile on Feller's face right there. Wow. <laughs> How did they get these guys to smile so good? Grinning ear Jeez. to ear. Great <laughs> illustration. Uh, this one's a PSA 4. So nice high grade, uh, but the only one graded. So show me yours. It's mm -hmm. that situation mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. there. I had to bring those up. Uh, two really unique cards. Um, we're lucky to have and never seen them before. One of the best things about working at Heritage. So One of one. Here's another very unique item, it's item 51. This is the 1982 to 85 Carl Malone Game Worn. Is it going to be the Jazz? <laughs> the only, no, it's a, a Louisiana Tech warm up jacket for, uh, I love the college stuff or even the high school stuff from these superstars. And uh, he went to a small school. So, uh, Louisiana Tech, he was. Uh, Whole Southland Conference from 83 to 85. Can you think believe he's a, he was at the top of that league? <laughs> yes. I saw him score 40 points, and I'll tell you, he's very underrated and underappreciated yeah, in the basketball world because he played in Utah and he didn't win a title. One of the finest courts. When he retired, I think he was third on the all-time list when he retired. And uh, just a very underrated player, in my opinion. And this is really cool. The baby blue nylon oh. knit. Uh, six snap button. It's got the wide collar. Straight out of the 80s, guys. Cool stuff. Powder blue. Um, you know, and that's unique. If you think you've got everything, you're a jazz fan, you're a Malone fan, you think you got everything, this is an item you need right here. Mm -hmm. And talking about legendary 80s stuff, this is 1986 to 87 Kareem Abdul Jabbar game worn. Lakers. Good jersey. provenance, isn't it, on that one? It's got a letter of provenance from <laughs> Kareem himself. Wow. Also, in that argument, greatest player ever. He should be right in there. Because um, he did it in college, he did it in high school, he did it in the NBA. He did it at Rutgers, too. Yes, he did. So, Mike. he did it everywhere. And what better to set, way to say 80s NBA than a Kareem Lakers jersey? Beautiful example. Uh, that year, they beat Burden the Celtics in the finals. Fifth of his six, six rings. That classic purple mesh. And it's got a very solid wear on mm -hmm. it. He was mm -hmm. banging down there. Uh, as he famously said in Airplane, you tried dra dragging <laughs> Mikhail down there. You know, I just work. watched that like a week ago. I think I watched Airplane, and uh, I still laughed. Oh, maybe we'll do a reenactment later. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> but we'll it's see. got a nice, bold autograph from him as well. So, very cool piece. What basketball item you want to talk about? Tom? This one, 1963 Harlem Globetrotters promotional broadside with a concert, halftime concert by Cab Calloway. The funny thing was, I was talking one of my. That's one of, entertaining. That is right unbelievable. There. I was talking to one of my collector friends, and he went to one of these games and said, you know, Cab Calloway was at the game he was at. Now he's from Michigan. And, um, you know, that's pretty. That's unbelievable. I toured with them. You know, that was a big show back then. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And I mean, they didn't, they didn't just screw around the, the Globe Charters, they played serious basketball. And um, leads me into the next one Curly Neal, who just passed away. What, about a month and a half ago now? Um, one of his game worn jerseys, 1979 to 85. One of the most popular Harlem Globetrotter players uh, with that classic, classic blue. Blue knit, I mean, blue mesh jersey with the with the Harlem and the 22 and the Globetrotters and the stars around it. Uh, just a just a fabulous, fabulous jersey uh, at 2600 right now. 
everybody's a fan of the globe trotters. Yeah, yeah, especially they don't have, they don't have anybody against them. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So in that same vein, I've got a 1973 to 80 Meadow Lark Lemon game worn Harlem Globe Trotters jersey. Uh, he played over three decades for the Globe Trotters, <laughs> but his game worn jerseys are rare and mm -hmm. hard to find. We haven't seen too many. And uh, this is a really unique piece for basketball collectors. Um, Will Chamberlain said Metal Lock Lemon was the greatest player he ever saw. Wow. I didn't Some high that. praise right From there. From Wilton. Wilt didn't give out too many, uh, no, <laughs> too many no. kudos to people all that often. Uh, Wilt, an ex-globetrotter himself. And, uh, you know, I remember seeing Metal Lark in Scooby-Doo episodes <laughs> with the globetrotter. I am you They right. had the globetrotters all yes, sleeping in the bed together. Absolutely. The giant bed. Oh. Uh, good stuff right there. Yes. But this is an amazing jersey. It's got great use. You know, they were playing almost every <laughs> night, yep. hanging it out. Dominating those generals, those poor, poor guys. Generals. Oh, they just but, couldn't uh, catch a break, and those poor referees too. Love to see the Globe Trotter stuff come in, and you mm -hmm. know, to have two at the same time from two of their biggest stars ever. Yeah, um, yeah. Incredible pieces, and speaking of incredible basketball pieces, right here, we got a 1995-96 Kevin Garnett game worn uniform. Full uniform from his rookie season. He's going into the Hall of Fame this summer as well in that huge class with him, Kobe, and Timmy. Um, outstanding. 19-year-old at a Farragut Academy. He was only on the all-rookie second team. So he wasn't wow. like some of these other guys who just, like LeBron, who just dominated. He had to work to get yeah. there. And uh, always intense. There's great wear on this one. Fraying on the identifiers, no surprise. He got, he would go hard in practice. If you toss him a basketball, he's gonna throw it into the tenth row. That's how he played. And it, it's one of the only photo match ones I've ever seen. I, I, I can't recall seeing another Garnett that's photo match. And you'll we'll all see what that price goes for because that's the pinnacle as a photo match, especially a rookie one. Yeah, which is so incredibly hard to find. So photo match to a March twenty third, nineteen ninety six game. Versus the Rockets, he had 12 points, three dimes, three steals, two rebounds, two blocks, filling up the stat That sheet. sounds like a Mike Provencale <laughs> game to me. I don't know. So it's photo matched, and it's got a letter of provenance from the equipment manager. So a really solid piece from a soon-to-be Hall of Famer and an NBA Legends rookie season. Mm -hmm. Beautiful piece. Up, up next for us, we've got an 87-88 Clyde Drexler game used jersey, and it's just a absolutely beautiful style. Um... Shows excellent wear, so this thing had to be worn for months um, on end. With the uh, shorts as well, uh, the shorts have Drexler chain, chain stitched. Um, this is 87 88, uh, an another underrated player from the 80s. Definitely. You're starting to see these 80s guys get a lot more love and recognition now. You're seeing it with the cards, you're going to start seeing it with the uniform, especially one like this that has such good wear. And guys, 80s basketball was so classic, and fans who were growing up watching that are now people who got a little money. That's spend. exactly right. Not us, but no, other, pe no. other people out there. So you're going to see a lot more money coming into that era of basketball. And another one, just an outstanding style with a letter of provenance from the equipment manager. 1990-91, Tom Chambers game used. Uh, Phoenix Suns with that, you get that bright orange and purple together. Just a classic, classic design. That's at $1,150 right now. Um, great provenance, great wear, great, great style. Absolutely. And had to bring these out. It's a 1998 Kobe Bryant game-worn sneakers. And uh, these are the Crazy Eights, very popular model. This was his first signature sneakers. He was just a teenager. He already had signature God. sneakers. How old were you, Tony, when you got your first line of signature sneakers? <laughs> I'm still waiting for that. Still waiting for it. Nike, give us a call. Oh, man, I was going to say that. <laughs> so these are the OG KB8s, the Crazy Eights. Each is signed. Uh, it has great wear on it and great provenance. They were won as a raffle prize at the Joe Dumars Classic Fieldhouse Summer B-Ball Camp at Shelby Township. Shout out to Shelby Township. <laughs> and our consigner was a member at that camp. He won them. Joe Dumars gave them to him. So Kobe Gamers, his first signature one, very distinctive style. The white and the black. All that coming together. The Adidas. You know? Yeah. Great, great lot. That to me would be a great investment piece. Oh, sure. Because it's you know from his first model of shoes, and those and are really popular. Guys. The sneaker heads love it just to collect them and to have a pair that Kobe wore. Mm -hmm. mm. Tasty piece. Oh. Here's, oh. One, here's one that's very close to my heart. This 2004 
Dirk Nowitzki game worn sneakers. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of Dirk sneakers out there. No, uh, he's a no. Nike guy too. Um, but these are from his career high 53 point game against the Rockets, even Ooh. a uh, division rival. It was December 12th at the AAC. They were playing the Rockets. Dirk had 53, McGrady had 48. But the Mavs won 113 to 106. So, Hall of Famer, one of the best scorers, best Maverick in history, no doubt. And to have his high game, 53 points from one of the league's best scorers ever, very cool. It's got great Mavericks colors, um, and they come from a Mavs ball boy. So, uh, great provenance on them as well. Michael Jordan, Gem Mint 10, $65,000 wow. right now. Uh, Sky's the limit. But I'm bump. No, <laughs> absolutely. That's incredible. That is uh, by far a record on that card. Yes. That is inching towards six yeah, I figures. Gonna, I bet it's going to go higher. <sighs> it could. <laughs> <laughs> I'm speechless again. I'm sorry. Yeah, can you believe it? I can't believe that. That is amazing. That is going to be one happy consigner. I, I can tell you that. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, one happy winning bidder, whatever you get it for. Absolutely. Oh, Jordan gosh. Rookie. Yeah. That's going to change the market on Jordan. Yes. And that Gem Mint 10. We're changing it right here. History yes. in the making. <laughs> Six feet apart. Six feet. <laughs> pretty close. We're pretty close. All right, what you got over there? I'm up. Me? Okay. Uh, Bernard That's King, 60 point game. PSA Mint 9. It's the only graded example. Uh, we talked about him before. He is one of the best scores of his time. Played in New York. You know, Madison Square Garden, and he could just fill up the basket. And that was Had a Christmas Day game. It was Christmas Day as well, so he gave everybody a very nice Christmas gift. Knicks fans, 60, at least. Yeah, <laughs> they haven't had too much to be uh, excited about in oh, quite oh. some time. Oh, you're at, you're at, Nick, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Mike, I'm sorry. You've got the best owner in, in, uh, in sports right now, so you should be good to go on that. Uh, one of the top three players in the NBA or top five, Anthony Davis game worn, New Orleans Pelicans game worn jersey. $2,500 is that right now. Photo matched um, with the Tom Benson Memorial st uh, strip on it on the stirrup. Uh, although he's with the Lakers now, he began his career, of course, with the uh, Pelicans and kind of, I guess, passed the torch to Zion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> they got lucky. They got yeah, lucky. they did. Got right back in oh. it. But yeah, cool modern gamer there. <clears throat> and speaking of something recent, <clears throat> I've got a 2018-19 Toronto Raptors NBA championship ring. And I know what you're thinking. They just won the title. A ring's already out there. That's right. This is that is impressive, though. First to appear at auction right here. A surprise title. I mean, they had a, a great team, but nobody was picking them at the beginning of the year to win the title. No. The great final series. I wish they wouldn't have. Kawhi Leonard was amazing, uh, just an outstanding team, and uh, it had been a while since Canada had won a title in one of the major sports, so I'm sure they were glad to see it. And, they have uh, an amazing fan base there. They do. I mean, that Jurassic one Park. Of those, one of those fans is going to get a championship ring right here, <laughs> just like the one from the players, uh, the Canadian Jewelers Baron Championship Rings, 10 karat gold content, it's a size 10 and a half, so if you're going to wear it, that's something to note. And it has the wooden display box, so virtually pristine. They just got it. Great example right here. All the bells and whistles. And speaking of that 86 Fleer Jordan, if you want to go right to the source, you've got an 86 Fleer wax box available. 36 unopened packs. Tony, would you break it open? No. You saw what that Jordan was I doing couldn't right do now. The thing is, I, I, I tried to have packs of unopened when I was a kid, and I had to know what's inside there. Tell me what. What's the Jordan PSA 9 at? Right now, uh, that's know, also we know that's also a record doing. price. So always a big debate: Do you break it open? Do you leave it? But one thing's for sure: there are people breaking open this unopened material, so they're becoming more rare. They're not making any more of these, and it's the quintessential <laughs> modern basketball set. Eighty six. That's clear. at twelve thousand. Twelve thousand for the nine now. So <laughs> now all those breakers, they're doing the math in their head right now. What could be in there? What could they get? Plenty of star power though. Uh, you got Jordan, Barkley, Drexler, Dumars, Ewing, Malone, uh, Wayman Tisdale. How about that? Hey, I'm a big jazz. I'm a big smooth jazz guy. I saw Wayman <laughs> in concert. I loved them. 
Let's, sweet, hear, sweet let's hear a little bit. I started out. No, I, 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 you know, yeah. to, see a, your... to see a guy six foot eight on the bass guitar strumming away, oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> a lot, I, I love Wayman Tisdale. I would love to see Tony at that concert. To see me quiet for that long uh, is kind of shocking. I doubt you were I quiet. I was quiet. I ate my chicken wings <laughs> and had a big smile on my face. Had a great time. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. The Fleer Wax Box, we just sold one for 86000 last year, I believe. Yes. So yes, those are very hot as well. Everybody wants a Jordan. You can get one right there. And back to the modern side on the unopened, we've got a 2012-13 Panini Prism Basketball Sealed 12-Box Hobby Case, Tony. The whole case. Each, box inclu each, bo each case includes a box with 20 packs, six cards per pack right there so a lot of potential in there you could have rookie cards or parallels from Kyrie Irving, Kawhi Leonard, Clay Thompson, Jimmy Butler, That's Anthony a good class. Davis, Damian Lillard um, so yeah it's got two draft classes in there in that one Tony so it's doubling up a lot of potential in there and I think this one's gonna make some noise for sure. This one hurts to even talk about because I remember I bought exactly one pack of these I think it was at a Walmart. A 1996 Topps Chrome, about one pack. I didn't get anything in it. And of course, I wasn't smart enough to buy more of them. I only bought the one pack. Uh, we have an unopened box of them. Of course, the Kobe rookie. 4200 right now for that unopened box. And that Chrome set, um, very popular. And with the refractors, uh, a lot of opportunities. And if you get a Kobe, well, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I think you get one or two per box. So uh, good luck on that. But... Uh, um, these are starting to really appreciate in value as well. Because that was wax a great, material great. is insane. Yeah, yeah, yep, and it just keeps climbing up. And that was a great class with Kobe, Ray Allen, oh boy, Steve, <laughs> Na Steve Nash. Like oh, yeah. on and on. Santa Clara. Yes. Very good, Mike. <laughs> I'm a historian. Yes, so. you are. Uh, we also have a 1976 Topps cello box with 20, 24 unopened packs. Peyton Rookie Year, 8250 right now. Um, you know, we've said it all night, the wax is doing extremely well, and this is a, another case of it. Um, you've got a chance to add a Peyton rookie, and, uh, you know, if you get a Jet Mint, it's a fifth, at least a $15,000 card. Good uh, investment right there. Yeah, yeah. Tony, I, mean, I can tell you would break them open. There's no way you could leave those yes. closed. Oh, the smell, <laughs> the gum, this, it was just, just, just great memories with that stuff. All right, we're going to take a quick break. And we talked about the old mill Joe Jackson earlier, and we're getting close to uh, extended bidding time right now. We got 20 21 minutes, minutes. 21 minutes. So that Joe Jackson card is at 340000 We talked about it at the top of the show. For people that are joining us late, take a look. It took the greatest scandal in the history of our national pastime to redefine Joe Jackson. This shoeless Joe Jackson rookie card finds the 22-year-old outfielder engaged in the decade-long climb toward the lofty ledge from which he'd fall. His 136 games with the 1910 New Orleans Pelicans would represent his final term of minor league ball before he'd return to the majors for good with a scorching 408 average for the 1911 Cleveland Indians the first and only rookie in Major League Baseball history to bat over 400. Equally as unlikely as Jackson's ascent from illiterate laborer to celebrated athlete is the fascinating backstory from which this relic derives. Our consigner was informed by his forebears the amazing collection that housed this rarity has been in the family since it came out of the cigarette pack. The collection contained almost 600 T206 white border tobacco cards and almost 90 T210 old mill cards. It has taken more than a century for this card to leave its original home, but on May 7th it will find a new owner who, given its significance, may treasure it for generations as well. So we are uh, again on the east side of Green Bay and this is one of the coolest places that nobody knows about. Uh, this is Indian Packing Plant. In 1919, Curly Lambo, who was a shipping clerk at Indian Packing, convinced his boss to uh, donate money for jerseys and also use the company's athletic field. So really, really cool place. I don't even know what it is now. It's kind of eerie because it's uh, a lot of the same 
paint probably from 1919. Uh, you can even see bricks are falling out of it. I mean, it's an old building. And uh, this is something you won't see in uh, your normal Packer tour. Um, and with that theme, I'm gonna talk about a real historic uh, piece in our auction. We have a pair of full unused tickets from Super Bowl One, and the story is just as cool as the significance of the tickets. So my uh, consigner's father, he was gambling in Las Vegas on his way to the Coliseum in Los Angeles, and he was winning so much money that he didn't go to the Super Bowl. He stayed in Las Vegas. I don't even know if he ended up winning uh, at the end of the trip or not. Uh, usually in Vegas, you probably end up losing it. But uh, yeah, he didn't go to the game, and that's why we have the full tickets. So really a cool piece. Really cool. Big board. Oh, we've got a lot of action right now. Um, let's see here real quick. 1914 uh, Walter Johnson Cracker Jack SGC 80, $5,000. Um, the Lazaway Gaudi, $47,000. So that one just got hit. Oof. Let's hit that refresh big one price, time. Big price. Yeah. I think the person saw Mike uh, Provenzale talking about it. And, uh, I'm taking no credit for that. All credit <laughs> to our, our catalogers and our great bidders out there. The 2013. So. Panini uh, Giannis at 1600 um, Nice. Just a, a lot of bids coming in now. This so let's talk time. about some uh, more unopened material. you got about 18 minutes to get your bids in before extended bidding it's begins. the official clock. <clears throat> so this is the 1954 Bowman Football One Cent Wax Box. 66 ye years later, this box still contains a dollar and 20 cents worth of cards. <laughs> well, it's 1954 <laughs> money. It's going to do much better than that. It's got 120 packs. They were one cent each back in the day, Tony. One cent. This was the second to last issue for Bowman football. It's a 128 card set. You got the George Blanda rookie in there. You got Otto Graham, Y.A. Tittle, Bobby Lane. Monumental nostalgic appeal here. And Wax has been doing so good. Every sport, every era, it doesn't matter. Every auction, we just reset the estimates, crank them up higher, and then they top those estimates. So this one, let's see where it's at right now. Pull it up real quick here. This is the 54 Bowman, the one cent wax box. How much are those one cents doing? It's a 25,000 right now. Very good return on investment. Absolutely. Wow. Another great football wax box. This is the 1962 Tops football wax box. It's packed with stars. There's 24 unopened packs in there, if you're going to open it. Tony, I know you'd open Those it. are tough because of those black borders. Yes. Those very are incredibly hard to find. Condition sensitive. Very. Those deep black borders mm -hmm. always show. Uh, you got Hall of Famer rookies from Ernie Davis, Fran Tarkenton, and Mike Didka yes. in there. So some big names. Um, not a single card from the set has ever graded Jim Mint. Wow. Yeah. Not one? And many have many of the cards have only one or none in mint even. It's so condition sensitive. Mm -hmm. So an unopened box of it. Imagine That would be tempting. The potential tempting. in there. Imagine. Let's see what it's at right now. Slot five six five 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 for those scoring at home. It's at <laughs> fifty thousand right now. And it's gonna get some more bids. I know it will. Um, another great one is the 2000 Playoff Contenders Football Unopened Hobby Box Tom Brady Rookie Year, Tony. We're seeing six-figure prices for the Brady 2000 Playoff Contenders in 10. Could be some in here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Potential for a championship ticket, Brady. Even huge money for that. There's very few remaining unopened. I've seen a lot of people breaking these open. And so. the thing is, when the football season begins... Brady is going to be right at the top with his new team. And if he did somehow win another In Super Bowl. Tampa Bay. Wow. Tampa Brady. Keep going. Keep going, Mike. I'm not sure he's uh, licensed those yet. Okay. So he's now he's going to. He's going to. You're giving him ideas. <laughs> Gee. It's just what he needs. So this one has 12 packs and the playoff cellophane is intact on this one. So pristine and untouched, as they say. Uh, staying with the Brady theme, we have a 2000 Leaf Certified Mirror Gold Brady. Um, Beckett 8.5 right now, the reserve amount of $8,000. 
Uh, you know, like I said, his stuff just kind of continues to go up and up and up. He's he established. Just keeps going. Yeah, uh, it and he's still pretty close to the top of his game yet at at his age, which is amazing. He's gonna when he retires, he's gonna retire as probably the greatest football player of all time, and um, his stuff uh, is gonna continue to go up, which it has after every Super Bowl. He seems to keep on winning. You think he's gonna do it with Tampa Bay? I don't know. I think they have a good defense, and, and that's going to help them. Maybe like a Peyton Manning thing. You have a great defense, and Gronk is going to help them a great deal. Mike Evans. Mike Evans. Yeah, they have a they have a. a Remember priest. what him and Moss did? He's a lot like Moss uh, mm-hmm. out mm-hmm. there. Very physical. He can go get it yeah. fast. Yeah, it's it, it, it's going to be must see TV, must see football, and Mike. It's going to be weird seeing him in a different uniform. Oh, it is. Um, one of the all time greats, Fred Bolitnikoff, a PSA nine. Population of only three with none higher. Yeah, um, and that's a beauty. W- when I think of Blitnikov, I think of Stickum. I think of <laughs> hair <Dirty>. everywhere, <laughs> goofy looking mustache. And this is a clean shaven Fred Blitnikov. I just saw him at a show in Chicago, and you super nice. You just guy. saw everybody. No, he's show. a super nice guy. How come you never take me to these shows, Tony? Well, I'll, I'll let you come in one of these times. Stuck back at the office. <laughs> uh, young looking uh, Blitnikov. Um, it's a tall boy, so. Of course, very hard to find in top grade. This one, one of the best of the best, and uh, very nicely centered. Uh, just a great, great piece, and a lot of Raider collectors are out there, so I'm sure there'll be pretty good bidding on this oh, one. Oh, yeah, great fan base. Oh, one of the best. Another classic football card here. This is the 1955 Topps Jim Thorpe PSA Mint 9. <clears throat> First football set produced by Topps, 100 card effort. You got Red Grange, you got Rockney, you got Ball, you got Four Horsemen. It's a beautiful set. It is. Very cool looking, but yeah. Thorpe is the most important of them. Um, it's mint nine. There's a dozen at nine, none higher. So one of those cream of the crop cards right there. You're not going to find a better one, and it's the most important card from the set. And I mean, just having, they, 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 they just did so well with getting, you know, by having rookie cards of these guys. There were no football cards really out, right. out, out, out then of, of most of these guys. So gives the collectors a chance to have a rookie card of a lot of the gridiron legends. All right, another classic here. It's the 1966 Philadelphia Dick Butkus, SGC <laughs> Mint 9. Dick Butkus, I think of three things. Vicious, angry, intimidating. <laughs> and he looks it on this card. Absolutely. Too. Really tough card to find in high grade. This is Pop 3. None higher from either service. So if you're looking for the top, you're Dick Butkus fan. I mean, he's a legend. He was like the Jim Brown on the defensive side. Yes, just yes. causing a lot of pain out there. And collectors of the set caught feeling a lot of pain trying to find a high-grade example. Here's one for you right here. SGC Mint 9. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Now this one, really close to my heart. Right here. <laughs> this is the 1972 Topps Roger Staubach rookie card. Captain America. And uh, we got to see the highlight that he has in our In This Together auction, which is going on right now to benefit the North Texas Food Bank. He created and signed the diagram of the Hail Mary play from the 1975 playoff game against the Minnesota Vikings. And he and Drew Pearson signed it. So check out that auction later. But let's stick with the May auction right now. <laughs> Captain America rookie card in a PSA Mint 9. This is a really sharp example uh, from a legendary player, Heisman winner, Super Bowl winner. Now he's killing it at real estate. Everything he touches is gold. Turns to gold. This card is gold too. There's only two higher than this PSA Mint 9 example right here. If there's one Cowboys card to have, it is that card. Yes. It has to be that card. Of course, of course. Uh, yeah, my 1991. Top Simmons Smith just isn't. Uh, ah, it's a nice card, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I like the vintage look of the Staubach. So we got 10 minutes till extended bidding begins, session one on cards. Anything in session two, which is memorabilia, or session three, you can keep bidding. You can bid all night, you can bid tomorrow. This is a legendary football issue right here. The first set devoted purely to football. It's the 1894 N302 Mayo's Cut Plug Football Near Set. This is number one current finest on the PSA registry, and this is a ridiculously tough set. This is the first one right here. Unlike football right now, this set is completely comprised of 
collegiate players, and not just collegiate players, all Ivy Leaguers. <laughs> Harvard, Princeton, Yale, that's it. So a legendary set. It was the first football set. 1894. Can you believe there was a I football set I cannot believe set they had then? a football set back then. I know college was the thing, of course. There was no NFL or any of that, but uh, I have never... I never knew they had something that early. The only thing that's similar about football now and football back then is that this is the violence. It was an incredibly violent back game back then. Right now, it's all about concussions, player safety, CTE. The government was even getting involved. That happened back then as well. A lot of organizations trying to end football because of the injuries, the concussions. There was even deaths. There was a lot of death during football there was a games. Lot of death. Uh, yes. President Roosevelt even met with heads of the Ivy League schools to talk about rule changes, so the government was involved back then. Over a hundred years ago, they were still having the same issues, <laughs> and uh, it's just funny about all these Ivy Leaguers. One quarterback out of Princeton, that it was possible, but I think he was going to be a free agent <laughs> signing. But things have really changed. This is an epic set. If you've never seen it before, take a look at HA.com, those classic images. They're in their school uniforms. They got the Ivy League names on it. Look how tough those eggheads look. <laughs> eggheads. <laughs> no offense. I bet. I mean, all eggheads. Ivy League has now is, you know, chess and debate and Nobel laureates, whatever that's <laughs> worth. But uh, a different game back then, and you can really see it in the set. This is the number one current finest known. These cards are really hard to come by, so no reason to scour all the places to find it, dig through shows. Pick this one up right now. Get it right off the bat. You got it right there. Tony, 1940s. How much time you got left? Oh, seven minutes until. Seven minutes. So you've got seven minutes to get those last bids in. And of course, Zion is at 19000 for the Cyber Monday. Uh, boy, it's just amazing that some of these <laughs> cards, what they're doing right now. Um, so we've got uh, some select items from Angelo Bertelli's collection, the uh, Heisman Trophy winner from Notre Dame. Um, we have his Letterman sweater, which that is, is so a cool. really, really cool piece. Um, it has, it's got the captain stripes on it, and it also has his name on the inside, on the inside pocket. A beautiful design on this thing with the interlocking ND for Notre Dame. Um, this Golden one's at 2900 yeah. Um, that one will go for a big, big number just because you got Heisman, you got Notre Dame, put all that stuff together, it's, it should be a really good number. And, after, and that's something they're usually going to hold on to, a letterman. Sliding. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And this has family provenance too, so uh, um, just a really cool piece, and there's a lot of Notre Dame collectors. Uh, after that, we've got a two, not, not, not one, two, 1967 Super Bowl one full tickets um, right next to each other. See, 106 oh, nice. and 107. Great story behind these. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, these, even though the game wasn't a sell, there's never been a horde of full tickets from Super Bowl One that, that, that have ever surfaced. So they are fairly rare. And I think as the years go on, you're starting to see people really go towards the early Super Bowls when it wasn't the, you know, was, when it wasn't a national holiday. Right. And those are at 6,000. Hard 000. to imagine. I know, I know. All right, one of my favorite items in the auction right here is we're creeping down five minutes till extended bidding. Oh, this of course it is. 1977 Earl Campbell, game-worn University of Texas Longhorns jersey. Tony, what's significant about 1977 for Earl Campbell? He won the Heisman that year, he didn't he? He won the Heisman in this jersey. Beautiful example. It's a tearaway, and we've talked about it before with the tearaways. Either they're ripped to shreds or they're pristine. This one's nicely right in the middle. A ton of Perfect. use, but still intact. Amazing example from the Tyler Rose. Mm -hmm. And, you know, football is so huge here in Texas. Uh, he was the high school player of the year in Tyler, Texas. He won the Heisman Trophy at UT. Hall of Famer at, in Houston. It doesn't get any better than that. Um, he signed it, and it's got great provenance as well. One of the hardest, if not the hardest runner in football history. Yes. I mean, guys would literally just bounce off of him. And, uh, I mean, yes, he did pay the price. I, you know, now he's in rough shape. But, my God, what a, it's an incredible runner. Dominant um, runner. Yeah, yeah. Love you, Blue. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, great provenance on this one. He gifted it after the game. 
to country le legend Jerry Max Lane, and it comes from his widow with her letter of provenance. And we were able to match this because every year at UT they had different style jerseys during his when career. When he played, it? oh wow! Yeah, so the okay. uh, double stripes with the numbers on the sleeve was only in '77. That's how we're able to date it to that Heisman Trophy season. It's at 7750 right now, and I think there's a little more in there. I think so. I think so. Yeah, I mean, college stuff is hard to find, hard to come by. Uh, guys and gals, we have four minutes left before extended bid, so get those bids in there. We're getting right down toward the end of it. Ooh, it's time. It's time. So uh, Time for what? Talk about another UT lot. Why oh, I, I should have been known that. Another great one here. This is a 2004 Vince Young Game Worn Texas Longhorns helmet. Very cool. That classic UT. Even not just me saying that. Everybody says it. The, uni the helmets haven't changed. You got the white with the long orange Longhorn on it. Burn orange, of course, trademark. Uh, <laughs> but Vince Young, legendary college players in the College Hall of Fame was part of the greatest collegiate game of all time in the 05 Rose Bowl. I remember Bowl. watching that when I was living no in debate, Vegas. No debate, no um, debate. So this one's from 2004. That season, all they did was win the Rose Bowl for the first time ever. They beat Michigan in a thriller. I was watching it in a bar in New Jersey with two of my uh, Longhorn alum friends. And a uh, great high-scoring game, very exciting. The first time we'd been in the Rose Bowl, and they won it. It's got all the stickers. It's got the Bowl Championship sticker on the back for the Rose Bowl. Great game-worn. I love those decals on the backs right of those here. helmets. I yeah. love those decals. And then, of course, uh, you know, this is where I'm putting all the stuff that's really near and dear to me. This is a 1993 Dallas Cowboys Super Bowl 28 championship ring player ring from wide receiver Tim Daniel. Uh, no surprise, Jerry Jones went all out on this ring. <laughs> yes, he did. covered in diamonds. Beautiful example. And uh, Cowboys championship ring, what, what more need be mm -hmm. said? Mm -hmm. Great piece. We've seen a few of them. We're based in Dallas. Best in Dallas, best in the world. Heritage. Um, <laughs> But yeah, great Super Bowl ring right there for uh, anyone in America. They're America's team, Tony. They are. They are. Uh, the 86 87 Fleur basketball, $44,000 for that unopened box. Ooh. So that continues to climb. Somebody sneaks in at the end, so now they can bid in the overtime session, which starts in two minutes. All right. And uh, Tony, why don't you knock out these Yeah, we last got two. some really cool Jerry Rice items. Um, the first unwashed jersey I have ever seen. Um, of rice, it's got a huge um, end zone paint mark on the back of the eight of the eighty. Um, photo match to two games. Uh, right now, it's at eighty five hundred with a fifteen thousand estimate. That is going to be one tomorrow that I think is going to really do well. And also, we have a two thousand two uh, Raiders jersey of uh, rice, and that's at forty eight hundred right now. So I think there's going to be some pretty good room on those. Um, we also have his. Cleats from when he came back from a torn ACL the same season he had the surgery, which has never been done before yeah, yeah. or since. Caught a touchdown that game, too. Yes, he did. Yeah. Very good, very good. And we have um, some really iconic receiver gloves. Um, so really good Jerry Rice items in this sale. All right, so we're right down to it. Extended One minute. bidding is about to begin. If you're teetering, should I bid? Should I get involved? Yes, you should. Just Hit go ahead button. and bid. Bid early, <laughs> bid often. Uh, we're going to take a quick break right now, and then we're going to come back, talk about some great items that are coming up tomorrow for Session 2 and Session 3. And Tony's childhood friend, Chris Narrett, is going to give us a little more knowledge. Can't wait. Okay, so this is a little bit different than what I've been doing. Uh, but this is a historic place in its own right. Green Bay history. World history, actually. So I believe that this house, or this house, was the famous house of Tony Giese back when him and I attended University of Wisconsin Green Bay. We are on Cass Street, and I think they remodeled that house, or they literally tore down Tony's house because it was such a dump. Uh, rumor has it that they had to put bolts on his door in, in college because he had so many girls after him. Um, either that or 
maybe he was always trying to get out of his house so he could go to the bakery and buy donuts. I don't know. One of the two. So anyway, thought this would be cool and hope you guys appreciate it. Thank you. Behold the Tick, a nigh invulnerable superhero in a big blue suit, who along with his faithful, albeit reluctant sidekick Arthur, assumes the role of protector of the city and yin to villainy's malevolent yang. In this auction are 129 original costumes and props used in the production of the show. This is possibly the one and only chance to own something from this uniquely absurd and critically acclaimed but tragically short-lived show. In a word, neat. Behold the tick, a nigh involved. Now that is some true Tony Geezy history. Right there. <laughs> Leave it to Chris Naren. Thank you to Chris Naren yes. for uh, coming through. <laughs> solid content. Glad to see him finally contributing, right? <laughs> He's a team player. He's a team player. What can I say? All right, Tony, where are we going now? We got some, more I got some stuff? really, really cool football items. Uh, starting off with uh, Johnny Unitas. Game used helmet from his, his last season in the NFL. This was when he was with the San Diego Chargers, so you've got that classic lightning bolt. But this helmet is photo matched, and one of the only photo matched Unitas items I've ever heard of. Um, there's a big scratch on the decal, on the side decal, which matches up to an early season game um, from September 23rd, 1973. Um, just incredible to be able to photo match something like that. That's at 4,700 right now. Usually seen with the Colts, of course, but love that Chargers. I know, I and know. Still got the 19. Yep, the yep. And as I, I, I still say they have the most beautiful uniform design ever. And they have those Doreen powder blues, but that'll be a different. Right day. after the Cowboys, but sure. Okay, second, second. <laughs> and the Broncos burnt orange. Okay. Uh, up next, uh, the only known Billy White Shoes Johnson game used Oilers helmet. Uh, this one shows great wear. It was just signed a couple months ago. Uh, it's got his name on Dymo label on the inside. And uh, can you do that, Dance? I absolutely can. can. You do that? <laughs> <laughs> one of the um, best end zone dances of all time. Uh, kind of one of the creators of it, to be honest with yeah. you. Um, Popularized it for sure. The uh, extended celebration. Let's say. <laughs> it's so funny. Now the NFL is kind of relaxed on that. And it, and they should. Oh, yeah, absolutely. More to the game. For so long, they just were too stuffy. Let them have but some But Heritage fun. still will not let Tony celebrate when he gets in a big concert. <laughs> no dancing, no spiking, no Chris nothing. Ivey says no you on that. Hand, hand the paperwork to the ref and move along. Act like you've been yeah, there, Tony. That's exactly right. <laughs> I don't even crack a smile better anymore. We know that's not true. <laughs> uh, we have Barry Sanders' 1998 game-worn cleats from... Um, the style that he wore in his last NFL game. Um, we talked about the first and the last. His last game-worn cleats. His Hall of Fame career. Nobody, Nobody knew he was going to Exactly, retire. yeah. Surprise. Yeah, yeah so uh, just a very, very cool Nike Zoom Air. Um, $1,550 right now, but I, I have a feeling tomorrow those things are going to do really, really well. Um, a lot of action, and a lot of people are um, watching this. <clears throat> Keep going, Tony. I'm, 19... take, I'm taking a break over here. Oh, yeah. Do you want anything to drink or anything? Or yeah, you... I got a water over here. I'm okay. Good. I was making sure. I don't want to see you, you know. Uh, 1934, <laughs> Tour of Japan. One of the nicest Tour of Japan balls I have ever seen with the original box That's included. Awesome. It's very, very cool. And the nice thing is you can see Ruth and Gehrig is right next to him on a side panel. You can display him from the same angle, which is always, always cool for a collector. Um, one of the nicer ones, um, this thing, of course, was signed and, and probably put back in that little box for decades on end. And, uh, you know, it's got a nice... It was its home for 80 years. Old. Yeah, exactly. I, I bet they kept it in there because uh, this is one of the nicer ones you're, you're going to find. And there are a lot of Tour of Japan collectors. And uh, if you want one of the nicest ones, this is it. And 1927 Yankees team signed ball. Murderer's Row, this is the year... Everybody wants, um, and it is the uh, the best of the best. Yeah. I mean, you got Ruth Gehrig, you got Herb Pennock, Earl Combs, Bingo, uh, Herb, um, Urban Shocker, who would die in 28. So you've got Tough that. Autograph. Yeah, very hard to find autograph. Just one of and the nicest. Great name. 
Yes, I need to make a absolutely, comeback. absolutely. Um, but there's not, of course, not a lot of 27 Yankee balls out there. And um, any tie one comes up for auction, they always do well. This has got a 20,000 estimate, and it is well on its way. It is at 16,500 right now, so uh, I think that'll easily hit that mark. Oh, yeah. We're going to go from a uh, <clears throat> high point of celebration with the 27 Yankees to one of the Saturdays in baseball history, if not the saddest. This is a 1939 Lou Gehrig Day, New York Yankees ticket stub. And a uh, famous speech, any sports fan uh, can quote the famous lines from it, of course, but uh, really something that showed his character. He wasn't down on himself. He said he got a bad break, mm -hmm. uh, but he still considered himself the luckiest man on earth. Um, and seeing that hug with, with Babe Ruth, you know, they had a frosty relationship for a long time. To see them hug there, kind of, you know, I at believe the end. Miller Huggins, it was, that said, uh, Garrig thought Ruth was a show-off, and Ruth thought Garrig was cheap, and they were both right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, to see them together, of course, the iconic photo of the ceremony uh, held in the Bronx, and even though there were 60,000 people packing the stadium that day, um, only eight tickets have made it into a PSA slab, which is unbelievable. I can't believe that. And this is one right here. It's one of the most iconic moments, not just in baseball history, but in sports history as a whole. Um, the curtain had been pulled back on the awful truth about his condition and, uh, you know, his final public appearance right there. And, you know, just a very stoic moment, a legendary moment. And this is the ticket to that day, one of only eight that have been graded. And one of the nicest, too. One of the nicest. It's a uh, PSA... VG3, so a really great item. And speaking of great items, we watched the video earlier. This is one of the greatest items we've ever handled at Heritage. It's a 1921 Babe Ruth game used bat from his 52nd <laughs> home run of that legendary 21 season. Career home run number 155. 1921 was the year that he ended the dead ball era. Right there. Put a nail Single handedly. In it, and he used this bat to do it. Uh, really legendary piece. One thing that we're really lucky to see at Heritage are items like this. And there's no item that's more evocative of its former owner than a Babe Ruth game used bat. This is a true war club, almost a yard in length and a few <laughs> ounces shy of three pounds. Uh, a wrist breaker, if anyone now would try <laughs> to swing that, but it's covered in use. John Tobby of PSA, the leading bat expert, said the use is outstanding. It's got Babe Ruth scoring on the side that he thought would uh, give bone a lift. <laughs> yes, bone rubbed. Really incredible. And at the time, as a lot of collectors know, Babe Ruth was ahead of his time as far as putting his collectibles out in the marketplace. And... Uh, a lot of his really significant bats that have come into the hobby are from the contests he had on his vaudeville tour and this is no exception this one was in cincinnati he gave it to a young slugger named henry borgman and it comes from the borgman family is where this derives from and it also has the hotel um, and sonia where ruth was staying has a letter ghost sign but that's the provenance from the hotel where he was staying about gifting the bat as uh, Part of the contest. Win. Yeah, I mean, the story behind this bat is so good. It has to be one of the top five Ruth bats in existence. Easily. And when you when you have that kind of provenance, that kind of story to it, it just adds so much to the whole equation of it. I mean, Ruth is a story in and of himself. He is, yes. Everything about him is mythic. Uh, you know, he's like Paul Bunyan or something. Um, but he actually did many of the exploits. So to have a bat with such great provenance tied to the biggest figure in our hobby. Mm -hmm. He is the cornerstone of the hobby. Uh, there's a lot of autographs out there, but far fewer game used bats. Few collectors can afford them. These are for the big guys, but an amazing piece that we are really honored to handle um, and get to see come through our doors. And it just seems like any time like, the moment was at, it, at its brightest, he always stepped up. The first All-Star game, he hits a home run. I mean, 27, 20, first game all these. Stadium. Yes, home run. He just always seemed to to, when he he's delivered. in the spotlight. He yeah, delivered. every single time it seemed like. So a Babe Ruth game used bat, of course, is an amazing item, but one that's so detailed, great provenance. We're able to detail it exactly to that legendary season. He broke his own home run record 
that year. And um, 50 second home run bat there. It's a PSA GU10. Unbelievable. That's not just sports. That's more, that's even Americana. That is my a museum quality piece. It could be in the Smithsonian, but it's not going to be. It's going to be in some collector's <laughs> collection. Some lucky person's going to own that true piece of history. Joe Jackson continues to perform. Uh, the old mill is at 360000 right now. Wow. Boy. Great piece with that great backstory coming yep, from yep. Uh, the family. With That's going to be one happy family. Uh, they are. In I hope they're hours. celebrating right now. Go ahead and celebrate. <laughs> you don't have to wait. Uh, six feet apart, though. <laughs> yeah, six feet apart. <laughs> so another great uh, Babe Ruth bat. Not many people can afford a Babe Ruth game used bat. A few more can afford a Babe Ruth sign bat. Really rare. It just wasn't being done at the time, having people no, sign a bat. No, it was hard to do it. Yes, You absolutely. know, it's not like they had Sharpies. They had a steel tip fountain pen, and they had to kind of <laughs> shave down some of the bat to sign it. It didn't always take so well. So when you find a nice one, um, it's cause for celebration. And really this is, is a stunningly strong autograph, 9 out of 10. Uh, amazing that he could do that on a bat with a fountain pen. Yes, this is yes. a beautiful example. There are not many roof sign bats out there. Um, so, and it's an H&B bat, of course, mm -hmm. gotta be. And uh, we estimated this one at 20,000, it's already at 22, this closes wow. tomorrow night. So, Ruth stuff, always doing great. Uh, you know, Jordan's rising, Jeter's rising, we're talking about them. Ruth, he's good as gold Ruth every is Ruth. time. Ruth is Ruth. Uh, so, a couple of really nice game used bats from um, 500 Home Run Club members. First, the, first off, probably the hardest Game used bat to find from the 500 home club, 500 home run club. Definitely, uh, Melot. Uh, he had that big leg kick. Of course, left-handed slugger. Uh, very small guy, but um, this one is from 1934. Game used 8.5, so a, a really high grade odd bat. That's at 12,500 right now. Um, he is just you just don't see a lot of his game used items out there. And a bat. We've only seen a couple, and we see everything. Yeah, yeah, we see a lot, and uh, this is one of the only ones we've ever had. And after that, we got an Ernie Banks game used bat from 1969. Um, he signed it, My Gamer. It's got the Yosh marks on it, which was one of the clubhouse yeah, explain guys. Explain that. Explain that. One of the clubhouse guy. His name was Yosh. Um, what's his first name? Gosh, what's his Yosh Kawana. Yeah, Kawana. Fly research right there. Yeah, like how's it. that? Um, he would notate on the knob of the bat, um, just put marks on it, and that was almost that's kind of his way of quote authenticating them. Um, it was of course unique to the Cubs, unique to just that team, but um, any time a Cubs bat does really well, it's got those quote unquote Yosh marks on it, which this one does. Great yeah. insight from the hobby legend Tony oh, Easy right goodness. there. Oh my goodness, come on. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I mean, there's not a lot of uh, Banks game use items out there. Jerseys are almost impossible. This one's at seventy-two fifty right now, and, you know, that's, I think, ten, maybe $15 an hour bat. It could be. Yeah, I agree. Uh, another legend of the game right here. Uh, this is a 1916-18 to 18 Ty Cobb game used bat. It's a PSA GU8. One of my favorite quotes from Ty Cobb. A ball bat is a wondrous weapon. <laughs> and that's just a great quote Beautiful. coming from someone who's, shall we say, shall we say aggressive, perhaps? <laughs> But uh, beautiful, one of the greatest hitters of all time, if not the greatest hitter. Um, the experts at PSA <laughs> say that the use is outstanding on this one. Beautiful example. I mean, it, just like Ruth, to have a Ty Cobb game used bat is an incredible yes, piece to yes. own. Um, it's from, the, the period is 1916 to 1980, 18, a three year span that saw Cobb average 378 batting average. I know, isn't that unbelievable? And claimed the American League, American League batting title twice in 1917 and 1918 with this bat right here. It's a here. pretty good era. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> not I wouldn't bad. complain. Um, so a really great piece. We've seen a few Cobb bats and this is one of the nicest we've seen. Another underrated guy. <clears throat> this is a 1971 Harmon Killebrew game he used bat. Very underrated. And this is from, he's in the 500 home run club of course. This is home run number 507 was hit with this bat. <laughs> it's used and signed, and it's got a teammate letter, PSA game use 9. Uh, another one where the use is outstanding, H&B bat. 
And, you know, to have a home run bat from a 500 home run club guy, he's noting it on there himself. Um, it was October 6, 1971, doubleheader against the Chicago White Sox. Mm. And um, Harmon hit his 507th home run. That's from the letter of provenance that it comes with right there. Very classy, very classy guy. One of the most desirable yep. uh, Killebrew bats there is in the hobby. You never hear people say anything bad about Harmon Killebrew. Yeah, like, I like, find one bad thing to say about him, Tommy. I can't. Worry. Even though I never met him, but <laughs> <laughs> you never bear hugged Harmon Killebrew. I don't. I wish I could have. That His would have been loss. awesome. His oh. loss. <clears throat> Another guy that nobody <laughs> says anything bad about Mike Trout. It's a 2013 Mike Trout game used and signed bat. PSA game used 10. Uh, second season, he was the rookie of the year, proving that was no mistake with this bat. Beautiful example. It's just pummeled with use on this one. Have you seen this one, Tony? Yes, it's a beautiful, yes, beautiful bat. he bath. did. 33 and a half inches and weighs 33 ounces. Nice size. It's got a nice silver Sharpie signature on it. And it's great when you get, a, you know, it's a lot more common with these modern bats to see the heavy usage on it. And this is one yeah, that yeah, has it. Yeah, sure. troll bats, are, are, I know we've said it before about investing. That's one of the guys that if they, if he does win a World Series... Which could happen because they are starting to make the right moves. Yeah, his stuff could jump up even more than what it is now, which is hard to believe. But yeah, he could easily get more dollars in his pocket too, right? Uh, yeah, he's, <laughs> he's 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 done okay. He's done okay. <laughs> All right, Tony, you got one more bat you want to talk about? Over Albert Pujols, 2005, one of the absolute greatest hitters of all time. Um, an old hickory stick, but it's from an MVP season of uh, 05. Excellent use. Game use nine. Um, uncracked. Um, so, you know, that's preferred among a lot of bat collectors to have an uncracked bat because, you know, cracked bat, I mean, you know, they actually fix those now. Right. So um, they professionally restore them. But uh, Pujols, of course, the first bout Hall of Famer. He'll go in at some point. Um, you know, the 600 home runs, 3,000 hits. He checks all the boxes. Absolutely. And, um, He'll walk into the Hall of Fame the first first ballot. Unanimous? Are you going to pick unanimous for him? I don't think he'll be unanimous because he's kind of trailed off a little bit. Yeah. But okay. God, Unlike you, Tony, you're still in your prime. I so. don't know. I'm getting those gray hairs sprouting out there, buddy. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Nah, it looks great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to jump to item 117. This is a cool one here. This is a signed 1951 Bowman Mickey Mantle. His true rookie card. Yes. And signed ones are just quite rare. And this one's a PSA Mint 9. Beautiful blue, blue signature from the Mick there. And uh, a lot of people love this card as well. How could you not? Oh, it's a classic look. And, you know, we've talked about it before. During that time period in the 80s and 90s when he was doing autograph shows, you did not get that card signed. No. You would get a look of... You're about to say <laughs> beat down. I, I, I think the Mick would, would would probably have a little talk with you about it, depending on what condition he was in at the time. But uh, you know that was something you did not do on these higher end cards. Was get them signed, and I give the person whoever whoever had the you know the hood spot. Yeah, exactly. To uh, get it signed, uh, a plus because uh, that market has just gone up incredibly well. Oh, indeed. Mm -hmm. All right, Tony, what do you got at 118 there? Let's talk about 118. another side card. 118. Oh, we got the... Oh, yeah, we got the Michael Jordan... Uh, oh, yeah, I got a, what are you going to follow the 51 Bowman Mantle sign? Yeah, we got a Michael Jordan signed uh, Fleer rookie card. Uh, I think it was at 8,700 when I saw. Um, you know, that's the card everybody wants, and to have it signed... Um, incredibly difficult. He doesn't sign that card all that often, and uh, this one is an incredible piece. Yeah, let's see what it's at. Oh. And after that, we've got a 1969 Denny McLean uh, game-worn jersey. Yeah, before we jump into, uh, we're going to talk about some game-worn jerseys next, but let's take a break. Okay. We've got it. We're in extended bidding. We'll get an update on what the bids are at when we come back, but right now, we're going to take a look at what do we got coming up? Oh, some more Chris Narrett hilarity and knowledge. So this is one of my favorite places in Green Bay, a little eerie. So this is where Buddy Holly, the Big Bopper, and Richie Valens played their second to last concert ever. It's the Riverside Ballroom on the east side of Green Bay. 
Uh, they played here February 1st, 1959. You see a lot of history going on here. The, the ballroom, the, the, the stage is still up in this ballroom. It's, I think it still has the same chandelier. It's a really, really cool historic place. So anyway, keeping with the historic feel, I want to talk about the 1973 Johnny Unitas Chargers helmet. It's photo matched to the September 23rd, 1973 game. And that was his last NFL win. It's a great style. Uh, obviously it's not from the team that he was most known for, but you can compare it to Joe Montana of the Chiefs or Joe Namath with the Rams. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of a, a niche collectible, but still, I, I don't even know if there's another photo match Unitas helmet out there. Really great piece, great wear. It is signed, so just a, just a fabulous piece. And like I said, it's photo matched. And as we know, photo matched items are gold in the hobby. So great stuff. Okay, so the next item I want to talk about is the 2000 Super Bowl 34 trophy presented to notable St. Louis philanthropist John Ferreira. Now, not every team that wins the Super Bowl gives the players or dignitaries or VIPs of the team trophies, little trophies. This uh, is one that they did, obviously. This is the St. Louis Rams version. Uh, it's estimated at 4,000 plus. And you're probably wondering what I'm doing standing in front of a house. Well, the Vince Lombardi trophy is what I'm talking about. And this was Vince Lombardi's house when he lived in Green Bay. The whole time, really. Uh, it's pretty neat. We're in uh, the De Pere Alloway area. It's kind of like a little suburb or town near Green Bay. It's right near the water. It's a really cool area. And uh, yeah, so I've actually been in this house. I was the creepy guy that walked up to the door guy didn't know me knocked on the door and asked if I asked if, if I could go in and he, he let let me go in and check it out so a lot of it's all original in there it's pretty cool so thank you and we're back Tony what's rising up the charts over there ah uh, quite a bit of action right now 14,000 for the Reggie Jackson rookie card which we talked about we did at the beginning of the show uh, let's see LeBron James stuff. Old Hoss. Yeah, Redborn. Yes, 18,500. If that hits 20, I'm going to change my nickname to Old Hoss. Old Hoss Provencal, I like that. Yeah, not bad. I'm not as deserving of it as he is, <laughs> uh, but I'm certainly old enough. I think everyone would agree there. You're an old soul. 2012-13, <laughs> um, Panini, was it? Oh, I just saw it. No, I can't find it. Come on, the people are waiting, Tony. Uh, deliver, deliver. Oh, pressure's on, folks. <laughs> and I can't find it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Wah, wah. I'll you give you a, a 1960 you Tops Willie really McCovey at 6,000 PSA 9 with none higher. Nice. Yes. Well, let's talk about some game-worn jerseys. Yeah, we got some really weekend. incredible items ending tomorrow night. Uh, first off... We have a Denny McLean 1969 Tigers jersey, Great which one. is um, it's a mirrors A9. It's at 3,000 right now from his Cy Young season. Of course, everybody remembers 68, but 69. Um, anytime you know you can have a, a Cy Young award-winning jersey of an of a player, um, huge huge selling point. Great vintage look. Yeah, yeah I love Detroit that that jersey. the old yeah that old D. Um, they've had it forever, and they've, they've continued to keep that, to keep their sense of history. Uh, very high-grade um, McLean. Uh, it's got a 5,000 estimate. It's well on its way. It's at 3,000 right now, and we expect that one to go pretty good tomorrow night, I believe. Oh, yeah, definitely. And uh, a guy who will be going into the Hall of Fame, who should have been in, I think, a long time ago, Ted Simmons, one of the best hitting catchers of all time. Um, had great, great numbers and just never seemed to get the love from the Hall of Fame. Finally got in, which, of course, somebody consigned a 1971 game worn knit jersey of Simmons. It has Very a. Cool. It's, it shows great, great wear. It's got a swatch built into the back of it um, as a repair. And uh, that's at 1150 right now, but I think a lot of people are waiting in the, in the weeds for that one. <laughs> I like that phrasing right there, yes. Tony. Yes. All right. Spirited bidding. Can't, we haven't talked enough Jeter tonight. So great Jeter <laughs> item we've got right here. 
2009 Derek Jeter game worn New York Yankees jersey, and this one is photo match. Just like Ruth, Jeter christened the new Yankees stadium with a title in 2009. <laughs> this jersey is from that season. It's photo match to a July 1st, 2009 game versus the Mariners. He reached base twice. And uh, Yankees jerseys that we've talked about many times are great for photo matching with the uh, pinstripes. This is no exception right here. Multiple matches. We've got the resolution photo matching LOA, and you can see it all over Getty as well. Mm -hmm. Great mm -hmm. Jeter jersey. Um, Jeter stuff is doing incredibly well right now, and it's going to continue to climb. A game-worn jersey from the new stadium season, a World Series season, is a great item to invest in. Especially being photo match. Oh, yeah. That, that's is the gold standard is the photo match it and having it, um, having that extra level of authenticity on it um, is going to help it a great deal. You can't beat that. Now, let's talk about that Hank Aaron. 1972 Hank Aaron. I know Hank it's one Aaron. of your favorites. Oh, I think it's just a bit of... Beautiful design. It's when they first started wearing knit jerseys. And just the cut of the team name and of the numbers, that red outlining around the numbers and the team name, and you had the, the feather on the, on the sleeve ends. There's just a lot of really cool attributes to this. Um, it's got the dual sand knit labels, and it also has the Aaron um, set one of 19, of, I'm sorry, set three of 1972. Um, and he, it has a very nice autograph on the front as well. He usually doesn't do a lot of inscriptions, and he signed it twice and did the 755. That's um, cool. It's very, very cool. Looked would look just beautiful on a mannequin. Uh, it's a, it's at 10,000 again. A lot of these, I think, tomorrow are going to go up quite a bit because uh, there's just not enough Aaron high quality Aaron pieces, and this is a beautiful, beautiful knit from uh, you know his, his days in Atlanta. And that's the one where they had the fire at the dry cleaners, right? I believe so, yes. And a so, lot of their jerseys were destroyed. This lot, one survived, but it's got a little browning from the, uh, from the, <laughs> from the flames on it. So a uh, cool little extra addition there. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, we're going to jump to item 127. This is a great one I've had my eye on since it arrived at our uh, offices. This is a Circa signatures we've ever seen from them. It doesn't even fit in the image. It's mm -hmm. so big. Mm -hmm. Single sign baseball. Of course, valuable in any format Cy Young signature, but this one is one he used for a first pitch at the 1952 Cleveland Old Time Day Festival. Old Time Great Pitcher Cy Young ceremonial first pitch is noted on there. It also says 30 feet short. <laughs> Cut him some slack. Wow. The man was, he was 85 wow. at the time. I hope I can still throw a ball 10 <laughs> feet at 85. Tony, you're already there. You're like 15 maybe. Yeah, yeah. But wow. despite that, he still had the strength to pin a great autograph. This is a 7 out of 10. A beautiful one. And... Uh, Cy Young signatures are hard to come by. They are. They are. are. Yeah, because people didn't, people didn't think of getting single signed baseballs back then. It was easier to do the postcards, the, the penny postcards, the Hall of Fame postcards. And um, getting a baseball is much, much more difficult. And uh, not a lot of people, you know, nobody knew they were going to be the value of, of what they of are today. And this one has that great notation on the back. They're making a joke about an 85-year-old <laughs> can't get it over the wow. plate. I bet even at 85, whoever wrote that, he could still strike him out. He, <laughs> if he had seen that comment, he would have brought the heat he after that. I mean, he might, have put, he might have put one in their ear, though, too. That's true. He's known to do that. All right, this is item 129. This is a very cool one. Um, political figure-related item here. And a uh, big baseball fan, Fidel Castro. Yes, he was. Yeah, and uh, there was always rumors that he tried out for the major leagues, didn't make it, so he had to go back to Cuba, and what would have been different if he had made a lead major league roster? I don't know how much truth that there is to that, but we do know he's a huge baseball fan. This is a unique one. It's from the early 2000s, and it's a double-signed baseball because he didn't like the autograph he did first, so he signed it again. comes with photographic evidence. Uh, just one of those really unique pieces. Um, you know, you don't see too many Fidel Castro signs. No, you don't. Balls. No, you don't. And it's very difficult, very hard to get them passed. You just, hard guy to approach and ask for an <laughs> yeah. you know, He wasn't on signing that show For most of his life. He mellowed a little bit in later years and had good relations with some of the ex-U.S. presidents, mm -hmm. uh, which is what this one stems from. 
but um, it was a meeting with President Jimmy Carter, and Carter got it autographed. And uh, cool that he, you know, he's signing for President Carter. He wants to give him a good autograph. He didn't like the first one. I'm sure many of you know it's not easy to sign a baseball. If you, if no, you, especially if you, you haven't do done it, it often. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So that's what happened here. But very cool piece. Tony, you back to some game worn jerseys over there? Oh, what have we got? We've got oh, we got a really cool 1977 Frank Robinson, uh, one of the absolute finest jersey designs I've ever seen. The Indians weren't very good on the field, but boy, they looked great. <laughs> they, look good. they had midnight. They had a Navy blue and then this fire engine red um, game worn jersey from Frank Robinson, the first African American manager in baseball history. Uh, just a great design. Of course, they have these, they sell them now, the uh, Mitchell and Ness jerseys um, of this design. Um, you can buy them in the, in the clubhouse store. And uh, a very, in my opinion, a very historic jersey. Uh, it's at 3500 but that one is style and substance. Very cool. And, You're right about that look. Oh, I just love that. And we were talking about this guy in the office today. 2000 Mark Grace, game-worn Chicago Cubs jersey. My, one of my coworkers, Andy. I said, I, I swear I heard that Grace... Underrated guy, Andy, uh, too. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's a very, very good card expert. Um, it's just He can do everything. You know, Up-and-comer. Watch out. For yes, him, yes, yes. Yeah. Rated rookie. Um, <laughs> and uh, Mark Grace had the most hits of anybody in the 1990s. Really? Yes. I did not know you would, that. You know, I mean, you'd think Gwen or you'd think Boggs or all those guys. It was Mark Grace. Uh, a oh. very, very consistent player. Borderline Hall of Famer, but kind of a cult hero in Chicago. Um, he was a wild guy. He liked to drink and liked to have a good old time and everything else in between. But um, just a man's man and a great, great consistent ball player. Um, that's at 825 right now. Um, just a great, cool... Blue alternate jersey of uh, one of Chicago's favorite, favorite players. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use that trivia. I'm going to win a bar bet. Someday. Yeah, yeah, because people we, don't... Once we can go back to bars. Yes, <laughs> that's true. Um, am I, I'm up next. Okay, yes. A 2001 Ichiro Suzuki game used uh, Mears A10 rookie jersey. Um, this one's got a letter from uh, the company that marketed his, his game used items. Um, of course, he came on in 2001, <laughs> won the MVP and Rookie of the Year, took the baseball world by storm. Impressive. Uh, yeah, yeah. This has got a sign letter from Ichiro. So, you, you know, you factor all that in there. These have done incredibly well in auction. And this one, um, I think it's got a 20000 estimate, and right now it's at... Ninety-seven fifty. So um, it's a it's nice. It's gonna get there. It will. It Ichiro will. stuff's been doing really well. Yes. Yep. And and that's a, another one. I think investment investment one. A lot of guys because he's got a worldwide reach. He's yes. not just a guy in the U.S. He's a guy worldwide. And um, you know, I know they showed him meeting Michael Jordan in the mid '90s, and yep. he was like a little kid, was just so <laughs> excited to meet Jordan. Speaking of Jordan, we have a pair of his game worn cleats from his short stint in Birmingham. And Great this, item. Oh, this is a really cool. This is at twenty one thousand right now. Wow! I didn't even realize. I mean, that's jumped up in the last. I'm thinking ESPN's days. like five on these. Yeah, it's five. Um, Thank you, ESPN. Tw twenty one thousand. They're signed. We have a good story to them as well, though. These were um, from uh, Jeff Reardon. They were gifted to Jeff Reardon, who put them in a charity auction, and they're autographed. They're Air Jordan cleats, and I've never seen any other Jordan game used baseball cleats before. You see some bats. It's, you see some uniforms, but these cleats, uh, you, you, you have shoe collectors. Yeah, you know? and they to have, have somebody a... who's so tied to shoes and the shoe industry. Exactly. And, yep. you know, there's a, a good amount of game-worn Jordan sneakers out there from his basketball career. But like you said, I've never seen yeah. game-worn cleats yep. before. Yep, and they, you just put those next to your game-worn Jordan basketball shoes, they, it, it'll look perfect on, in, in a... In a Display another bragging item right there. Absolutely, yes. We got another question. We have a couple questions actually. All right, let's do it. So Kathleen says I have a Mark McGuire 3B card, 1887, and she wants to get it regraded. She got it graded by Snaggletooth grading first. What should she do? <laughs> <laughs> Good old Snaggletooth. I love it. <laughs> um, I would say get it regraded. Try maybe uh, Foghorn Leghorn. <laughs> <laughs> um, Captain Caveman grading, maybe. Um, 
if it's not graded by one of the top grading companies, you should get it regraded, see what the experts say, especially if you want to sell it. That's going to get you the best prices. Yeah, there were in the 90s when, when grading really took off, there was a lot of companies that were here and gone. Yeah. And, uh, we'll yes. file that under here and gone. Yes. I, Although I'm going to check them out after. Yeah. <laughs> if that's true, I would like to have just something, something slabbed <laughs> in that older. One more question from Kathleen. She also has a LeBron James card. It's a uh, upper deck laminated. Uh, it says laminated has an upper deck and Goldilocks at the top. Should she get a grade? She's throwing some curveballs here. <laughs> I'll tell you Goldilocks. what. Goldilocks. Send us, send a, us a photo of that you one. You can send it to any of our social media accounts, and we'll tell you exactly what it's <laughs> worth. Goldilocks LeBron card, huh? Keep them coming. All right, Tony. For this one, I'm going back. How far back are you going? Way back. <laughs> this is an early 1870s Washington Olympics baseball club. This is baseball club. Two words. Two, two words. words. Yes. Photographic display. This is one of from the infancy of the game. It is a beautiful piece. They are one of 12 members of the National Association of Baseball Players <laughs> to Go Pro. The Washington Olympics were a charter member of the first ever professional baseball league. They played their home games at the Olympic grounds just a few hundred yards from the White House. That's how they got their name, although they were also called the Blues. But uh, It's always, really good research. Yeah. And it's I'm, always I'm guessing Jonathan did some great research. Always that. risky business trying to identify players from this era, especially if they aren't stars. Um, but we believe we've got Asa Brainerd, Davey Force, George Hall, and Doug Allison among the nine on there. Uh, this is just a beautiful piece. It has calligraphy text, uh, the sepia tone photos. It's got it all. This is one that you hang it up, and people are going to say, What, what is, is that? that? Yes. You know, and it's got a great backstory to it, a lot of history. It is a really, really cool piece. And this next one, I had to bring this one out. This is item 133. This is an 1870s baseball albumen photograph, another super old one. And why did I bring this out? Because you could see guys that look just like this on the streets of Brooklyn, anywhere some <laughs> hipsters might hang out. Hipsters. Things have come <laughs> right back around, but these were uh, baseball players from the infancy of the game. This one hasn't hit its opening bid yet, but I think it is such a cool item. Somebody's going to pick this up and be very happy with it. It's another one that you look at it and people are just going to be drawn to it. And uh, I'm pretty sure, uh, what'd you say our cameraman's name? Taylor? I think I, it's Taylor. I bet he's got some shirts like these. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, it's a tough crowd here. So he we're going to take good job. one Jeez. more break. We have some more pure gold from our buddy Chris Narrett. Wow. And then we're going to come back. We're going to do five, one more update. So take a look at what Chris Narrett has to offer. <laughs> Okay, so the next item I want to talk about is the 2000 Super Bowl 34 trophy presented to notable St. Louis philanthropist John Ferreira. Now, not every team that wins the Super Bowl gives the players or dignitaries or VIPs of the team trophies, little trophies. This uh, is one that they did, obviously. This is the St. Louis Rams version. Uh, it's estimated at 4,000 plus. And you're probably wondering what I'm doing standing in front of a house. Well, the Vince Lombardi Trophy is what I'm talking about. And this was Vince Lombardi's house when he lived in Green Bay. The whole time, really. Uh, it's pretty neat. We're in uh, the De Pere Alloway area. It's kind of like a little suburb or town near Green Bay. It's right near the water. It's a really cool area. And uh, yeah, so I've actually been in this house. I was the creepy guy that walked up to the door guy didn't know me knocked on the door and asked if I asked if I could go in and he, he let let me go in and check it out so a lot of it's all original in there it's pretty cool so thank you and we're back boy deja vu on that narrative video huh? <laughs> <laughs> it was so good we had to show it again so we're deep in extended bidding things are going very well we hope you guys are getting the items you want we're going to detail a few more items that are coming up tomorrow and Saturday, and then we're going to let you guys enjoy your Thursday night. Tony, please take it away. All right. Two more items. Uh, this one, I just 1963 Cassius Clay 
signed I'm the Greatest uh, album, but the inscription he did, he put the next champ <laughs> as an inscription. And uh, you want to talk ballsy? That's about as ballsy as you could get. But uh, of course, he was he right. He had a little uh, braggadocia. He did. He did. Uh, this was at 525 right now, but a really cool vintage Cassius Clay signature. And those are hard to find, Definitely. and those have always performed well in auctions. And one more. Tony's final item of the night. This is not Mr. Irrelevant. Please, don't think that. <laughs> it is a 1996 New York Yankees team-signed guitar. Oh, that is I, interesting. I saw I have, that. This is the only one I have ever seen. Um, signed on the front with the American flag as the background. Of course, it's got Jeter, Posada, all, those, all the cast of characters. Um, that's one that you put in your in your trophy room or you put in your um, collection, display it, and uh, it's unique, it's American, it's rock and roll, and it's New York Yankees. What more could you ask for there? I don't think there's much more you could ask for. Nice one, Tony. Yes, thank you. I mentioned at the top that we had some fine art in this auction, and here it is. This is item 136. <clears throat> it's a 1983 Wayne Gretzky original painting by... Leroy Neiman. Leroy's material has been very hot of late, whether it's in our auction or in our credible art department's auctions. It's continuing going up. He's finally getting the respect he deserves. A lot of people used to think, oh, he's just a sports artist and kind of cast him to the side, but now we're seeing incredible prices for him. And here he's painting the greatest, and it's a great image. Uh, I love his inventive use of the edge of the palette knife here to cut the skate trails through the ice on it. <clears throat> it's a great look. Uh, take a look at that. And if you're into hockey, Gretzky, Neiman, fine art, one-of-a-kind pieces, this is checking all those boxes mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. there. Great display piece, of course. And the last piece for the night, I saw this when it came in. I'm going to be incredibly jealous of whoever wins this, Tony. This is item 157. It's going down Saturday night. This is a 1998 Stan Lee original signed <laughs> Spider-Man sketch. PSA Mint 9. <clears throat> Stan Lee, personal hero, um, as is Spider-Man. And this is a very unique piece. We've talked about people whose autographs have become very valuable. Stan Lee is one of those guys. He <laughs> revolutionized the industry. The MCU has taken it to another level. He did sign a lot of things, but every Stan Lee autograph I've tried to buy, it just goes skyrockets, mm -hmm, and I don't mm -hmm. get it. <clears throat> this one is very cool. He drew a sketch of Spider-Man and then signed it. Of course, he's the original creator of Spider-Man, the writer. Um, Steve Ditko was the original artist, so you don't see many Stan Lee sketches, and it's all right. Yeah, it's very <laughs> unique. He, he was the man with the words, for sure. Yeah. So a really unique piece, one of those crossover pieces. I was talking to our comic guys about it. We have an incredible comic department, and they love this piece, too. And if you're into those unique pieces, this is one right here. This is going to close Saturday night. So we want to give one more shout out to the In This Together auction we have going on right now. <clears throat> it's benefiting the North Texas Food Bank. They are in desperate need right now of our help. We reached out to the Dallas Cowboys, the Dallas Mavericks, the Texas Rangers, the Dallas Stars, and FC Dallas. They gave generously some very great items, some great experiences and you're gonna watch a video about them but we've had added to this auction since it launched Dallasite Don Henley contacted us he wanted to get involved he's one of the most generous men you'll find and he has donated the images have been staggering lines of cars stretching for miles as people wait for hours to collect donated meals we have seen them over and over in recent weeks one warning sign among many that a global pandemic has severe implications for our neighbors trying to remain safe and healthy, and hoping not to go hungry while doing so. This is why Heritage Auctions, the world's largest collectibles auction house, is proud to partner with the hometown professional sports teams and some of sports' biggest names and greatest players. For the DFW Sports Superstars are in this together charity auction, benefiting the North Texas Food Bank. The Dallas Cowboys, Dallas Mavericks, Texas Rangers, Dallas Stars, and FC Dallas 
have each generously donated items for this auction to fill the North Texas Food Bank's coffers during this difficult and desperate moment. Bidding opens April 29th at HA.com and runs through May 13th, culminating that night with a very special live auction at 8 p.m. Dallas time. That's when we'll all gather around the computer to raise money for the North Texas Food Bank when it needs our help the most. Among the one-of-a-kind items available during this special auction, you will find a painted diagram of the legendary 1975 Hail Mary play, created and signed by none other than its mastermind, Hall of Fame Dallas Cowboys quarterback Roger Staubach, on its 45th anniversary. His partner on that play, receiver Drew Pearson, has also signed the piece. There will never be another keepsake like this one. FC Dallas is also offering a player for a day experience, which includes signing a real first team contract, a video about that signing, and a full FC Dallas kit. The winner will also have the opportunity to train with the FC Dallas first team during an upcoming training session. That'll happen later, of course, but a team signed ball will be the winners today. And the Dallas Stars are offering four plaza level tickets and a post game meet and greet during the 2020 2021 season. There are also signed jerseys, balls, helmets, and photographs from local sports greats, including Troy Aikman, Dirk Nowitzki, Michael Irvin, Dak Prescott, Christophs Porzingis, Pudge Rodriguez, Ezekiel Elliott, Joe Pavelski, Jerry Jones, and Mark Cuban, to name just a few. Everyone was eager to help when they heard that the North Texas Food Bank distributed 6 million pounds of food just between March 15th and April 15th a 1.5 million pound increase over the previous two months combined. More than 13,000 families have been served at the mobile food pantries in just the past few weeks, with as many as 70% of those in need clients who have never before sought help. These athletes have done their part by participating in heritage auctions in this Together Charity Auction. Now it's your chance to do your part by going to ha.com backslash in this together between now and May 13th when the live bidding begins at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. We'll see you there. Happy bidding. That is our show tonight. We want to thank everyone for joining us. And of course, thank you to all of our incredible consigners and bidders who make this all possible. We can't do it without you. And to our staff that helps us do the show that's behind the scenes. And of course, got to give a shout out to our operations team. They're the best in the business. They handle all this incredible material, make sure it's taken care of, it gets processed, and it gets to the people who win it, which is you tonight. We hope you guys got everything you wanted. Be sure to bid tomorrow night in session two, Saturday night in session three, and please bid in our charity auction benefiting the North Texas Food Bank. One thing we love about this show is that it gives us a chance to give you guys a peek behind the curtain. We promised there'd be more music, and there is.